Good. Yes, thank you. Good, good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 uh, meeting of the uh, Site Plan Review and Appearance Board. Um, time to call the roll. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Here. Annette Gray? Here. Stephen Cohen? Here. Bryce Patton? Here. We have, have you had a chance to review the minutes, everyone? We got, we got two packets of minutes. Any, any changes from the minutes of the November 17th? Chair, we actually, the next item is actually approval of the agenda. Oh, agenda, I'm sorry, I went right over that. Any changes to the agenda? Not from Michelle, staff. everything good? We're good, yes. Board, any changes, we're good? Good. Did I have a motion? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Now we get to the minutes. Is there any, uh, any comments from the board on the 11-17-2021 minutes? No. no. I've, got, I've got one change for the record, Michelle. Okay. On the, uh, the 17th under board comments, it says I asked uh, Mr. Bennett can come back into the room. I, I wanted to, for the record, say I wanted to ask Mr. Bennett if Carol Perez could come back into the room to ask her a question. And Mr. Bennett shot me down. <laughs> so, do you have, do you understand what he's saying? This is Here, I'll show you. page five. Right So since we do have amendments to one set of minutes, we'll do the minutes in two separate motions. Yep. Mm -hmm. And one will need to incorporate the requested change. Okay. Do, you, do I have a motion to approve the 1117 minutes as, as amended? I move to approve the SPRAD minutes from November 17, 2021 as amended. I'll second. Carol. Okay, Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Mr. Bennett, does she have to repeat every time the names of the people who are here that for the record or something? It's pretty obvious they're not here. <laughs> I've actually never been asked that question before, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Michelle, do you have any I think the record, knowledge of what we've done in the past? I think with the um, roll call, the record already indicates the three board members that are absent, so she can... Um, yeah. And exclude them if she wishes. Save you repeating all that stuff. Okay, are there any changes to the, uh, the SPRAB amendments for the 12-8-2021 uh, meeting? No, I'll move to approve the SPRAB minutes from the 12-8-21 meeting. Second. Carol Perez? Yes. Nick Gray? Yes. Cohen? <coughs> yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Okay, now if you plan to speak or... Uh, uh, address the, the board. Uh, please stand up and be sworn. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, are there any comments from the public on any of the items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, that portion is closed. Um, any presentations? We do Shane? not. No, sir. You're good. Okay, so now we're coming to our quasi-judicial hearings. Uh, here's how they. Here's how they. Here's how they go. The hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach as a judicial rules the applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case the public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six if the person representing an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak the city commission board members staff and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness the city or applicant may be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony the decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not be legally made upon a personal view as to whether the project is a good project or not, 
nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. So now I think we're present, ready for the presentation for item 8A. Good afternoon, board. Oh, wait, just wait. one second. Jen, Jen needs to okay. present it. Hi, good evening. I'm Jen Buse, um, planner uh, with Development Services. Um, file number, I'd like to put into record file number 2022-119, and this is item number 8A. And let me get your presentation. Okay, any ex parte? No. No. On the board? I've worked with Mr. Gregory in the past, but uh, have not had any contacts on this project. So Mr. Gregory, state your name and, and address and- Mark Gregory, 18 Selena Avenue, number 29, Delray Beach, Florida. I'm here to uh, present a, uh, a change to an existing sign program, a blanket sign program. Um, it's a minor revision. see here okay this is a, a an older past sign um, photograph probably dated five years ago this shows where one of the subject signs that we're going to discuss today is going to be located um, this is an elevator this is a, a rendering of um, some past tenants that have been in the building that have gone by the by um, this is a sign in the location, and we'll be talking more about that um, and comparing it with a drawing that was submitted. Um, these are just an orientation. Uh, these are signs around the neighborhood. This is a pop-up shot showing the building on, on Fifth Avenue and Atlantic Avenue. This is one of the proposed signs that we have, Opal and Orr. It's going to take over a small little restaurant on the east side of this site. This is a little close-up of it. They're requested 17-inch letters on top, 6.5-inch letters on the bottom. They're going to be backlit black reverse channel letters. And I'll get into that again in a little bit. Um, Realty One, that's where going where the old um, 502 Suites sign was located. Costa, this is a, a sign that has been permitted and installed. It, it met the requirements of the criteria. This is the actual picture. What I want to show you here is going back, take a look at the spacing top and bottom, and then go back. This is an elevation drawing that I had in a file, and I use that as my submission. But as you notice, I guess, what was proposed by the architect and what was actually built had a lot more vertical spacing on it. So the signs actually have larger margins that we can put between the awnings, the top, and the sides of the building. Okay, next one. This is an, a sign that's proposing, this is new to this criteria. It's one projecting sign, and it's at the entrance of Costa Organic Kitchen. This is a lighting explanation. Um, you have two types of letters we're requesting here. We have both they'll be black during the day, and at night, one will light just the body of the letter. The other one, which is opal and ore, this is their request to have a silhouette lighting on the letter. All right, um, where it's going to be prime, uh, the, the basic program inventory is going to be three wall signs. There are two under canopy signs, and there's the new sign, which is the projecting sign. We have requested one line maximum copy of 30 inches, two lines, 24 for the top letter, 10 inches for the smaller letter, size not to lead, uh, exceed code calculations, um, additional uh, projecting sign to fall within the allowable constraints of the code. Um, That's the end of that presentation. 
Council. Council? May I, um, will I be able to make a rebuttal after uh, and makes her presentation? Yes. All right, please. I'm, I'm done with my presentation. Any questions you may have, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yeah, when we get to that, that's fine. Okay, so this is 502 East Atlantic Avenue, agenda item 8A. It is a consideration of an amendment to, it's a blanket sign program, which is a little bit different than a master sign program. It is on the southeast corner of Atlantic Avenue and Southeast Fifth Avenue, and it is surrounded by CBD on all sides. Um, this is a, also a very interesting building. There is retail, restaurant, and office in this building, and it has two stories. Um, I went ahead and put this in here. Um, it was previ previously um, this almost pink flamingo color looking, and just probably a month or two, it was approved for this color change here. So it does have a bit of a history. Um, back in December of 2014, um, they came in for an amendment to the blanket sign program. Um, at that time, there were some concerns of, of where some of the proposed signs were. Uh, they wanted to propose the Realty on the Avenue sign, which was a tenant at the time, on the entrance on the corner here. Um, they, I believe it was tabled at that time, and they came back in 2015 with a new concept. And um, the concept at that time was they removed the Realty on the Avenue sign here and put kind of a directory sign on the front. And then um, wanted to put the Realty on the Avenue sign above where the 504 office suites um, is located. Again, um, the board at the time did not feel that they were, um, took the direction of the first um, meeting in, in December. And so it was postponed again. And they never came back again for, um, any any um, signage at that point. So the approved blanket sign program here, um, very quickly, there are three wall signs that are approved in the sign program. It's on the northwest and the northeast elevation, as um, Mr. Gregory pointed out. And in the original sign program, there are three under canopy signs. I'm not sure what happened to the one that's not there now. Um, they are individual channel letters, white face, black trim, black returns, um, or registered trademark and logos. The maximum letter height for one line of copy is 24 inches, and two lines of copy is a combination of 10 inches on the top line, 10 inches on the lower line, where you see another combination of 15 and 6. The proposed blanket sign program, I try to um, point out what the increases were. Um, the one line of copy wants to be increased four inches from 24 to 30. And on the uh, two lines of copy, there's an increase as well. And they want to add a projecting sign, so the increase in the amount of signs um, is also proposed. The option of the reverse channel letters, um, that's just basically an update of how signs are going on buildings today. So here, um, you do have um, the sections of what a master sign and a blanket sign program. The big difference between a master and a blanket is in a master sign program, you have the automatic granting of waivers. In a blanket sign program, it's for smaller buildings, and you don't have that option with the blanket sign program. With, we also look at the aesthetics, qualifications, and basis. This includes the, um, where they're located, the size and scale to the building facade, if they are um, within um, proportionate and so forth. So as I stated before, this is kind of a unique building. It is two stories. The first floor has um, two restaurants. They each have their own entrance. Um, while the main building has kind of an open concept where you walk in and there's a retail component um, with kind of kiosk-like separations. The second floor contains office space with about approximately 28 individual offices. The sign approved that was administratively was part of what was um, part of the blanket sign program. It did meet the size and placement of the approved sign program, and I believe 
this was only 21 inches when it came in to be approved, so it's not the max of the 24 inches. And they are proposing the um, on the north side 21 inches, um, and the sign program for one line of copy that they want to um, include is 30 inches. Um, this would not fit in the proposed elevation. I think it would be really cramped up there. Um, in a discussion with Mr. Gregory, there's about three inches from the scuppers and the um, awnings on this 21 inches that's proposed now. Also, historically, office signage is not approved for second floor tenants. Um, it is usually, when it's a multi-tenant building like this, it's usually the name of the, off, um, the building. Um, as you saw before, it was named 504 Office Building. The proposed um, projecting sign is on Federal Highway. It is for Costa Organic Kitchen. Um, it is allowed by um, right as far as size within the sign code. Um, however, there's a new provision in our um, sign code that if it is in the right of way, um, a, an agreement has to be done um, and executed between the city and um, uh, the applicant or the owner. And you can see here that it projects out into the right of way. Um, this is the sign that Mr. Gregory did point out. This is an approved location um, on the northeast elevation. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, we'll get to rebuttal and cross-examination in a sec. We just, if there's anyone here who would like to comment on this project, um, step up to the podium, state your name and address. You have three minutes. Seeing no one rushing to the podium. Uh, Mr. Gregory, would you like to rebut? A few clarifications. Um, if we can go back to the um, elevation sign, the real T sign. Okay, these letters are proposed at 21. I had a discussion with the um, property owner today, and uh, he will basically reduce them down to the previous size 501 sign, a uh, 502 sign. The um, 502 was 502 office suites, not office building. I mean, uh, if you want it, Realty One Group building, we can do that. I mean, he's open to, to any changes. Further, he's going to remove the uh, request for 30 inch tall letters on the building, and he's going to go back to the maximum 24. With the Opal and Orr, he's going to go to the size that Opal and Orr was, which was 15 and 6 instead of the 17 and six and three quarters, um, and do it at that, that size. So really the only two changes we are requesting here is the projecting sign, and we don't have a problem meeting the requirements of the encroachment into the right of way. We, there are many elements all around the building that do that. And the, um, and the fact that the letters will be basically black faces and they'll light white at night. I'm done with my rebuttal. I just want to stress again that um, I believe it's been stressed at the board at this board before that um, on the second floor it is normally the naming rights of a building and not um, one particular office on the second floor. This is 28 offices. Realty One Group has not come in for a zoning um, verification letter. They're not registered with the BTR yet. So um, it's my rebuttal. They, does Realty One own the building? The, the parent company owns Realty One franchise, and basically most of the suites in there are the executives for each one of the various divisions of the company. Um, and I was actually sent a copy of the BTR. Um, I can forward it to Jen. I mean, I don't know where that disconnect is, but... Um, I don't, don't see where there's a problem in doing a justification on that. Okay. Chair, if I may, uh, Jen, can I, it sounds like the applicant is asking to amend the application that they've submitted. Yes. So as I've said before, I, I caution the board, to, and the board's not really asking for the amendment per se or designing from the dais, but 
with without knowing beforehand what the exact requests were going to entail, I really think it's more appropriate when an applicant wants to amend the application, especially at the meeting. The board requests from the applicant, you know, a postponement unless it can be very clearly and easily understood what the amendment uh, to the application is. So I'd, I would advise the board to keep that in mind and, and to maybe even consider starting the discussion with whether this item should be postponed to the next site plan review and appearance board meeting so that the application can be amended and vetted under the amended request. But the only, the only other thing we're uh, discussing is that, uh, that board and, and the sign on, on federal, right, which is the, the one that's in the right of way? Projection. Projection sign? Well, as an additional sign under the program. Right. Um, but I don't, if Jen has a slide, I think, that had at least some bullet points, but that's not necessarily the entire application. Uh, sometimes they're just helpful to direct the major changes. So it's still the issue of not knowing exactly everything that's been requested, withdrawn, or amended, and avoiding the potential for an approval where the applicant and the board are not on the same page. The way I understood it, it was for the wall sign coming out from the wall, right. black letters instead of what, white? That was what the original criteria was. You say you're going back to the same size as, as every sign. The, the, within the, the size parameters of the signs. Then we still have an issue with the naming of the building and uh, I don't know the what's been done in Delray in the past, which is very confusing for me on that <laughs> one. Um, but, but your drawings are, um, would be all wrong at this point. You'd have, I'd to, have to correct them all. You'd yet. have to come back and correct them. Well, we could, I, I agree. I don't like, I don't like um, designing from the day, so I like to see what they look like. Um, would you be amenable? We, we could continue with direction. We've already, we've already given you the direction. Um, so do I have a, Jen, is that okay with you? So do I have a motion to continue with direction after, based on the discussion we've had regarding the size? Chair, just uh, briefly before, Jen, are there any uh, additional notices that would require or be helpful to date certain? No. Okay, so a simple motion to postpone and then Okay. The applicant can work with the city to get on. You don't need a date certain or anything. Correct. Okay. Do I have an? Do I have a motion to to uh, postpone? Point of clarification. Yeah. Uh, the naming would that be more clear when that comes back as part of this? Um, as opposed to is it one business that owns the building or could there potentially be other second story signs for business separate business owners? Normally, when there are. 28 office separate office buildings like that up there um, a directory sign is what is appropriate um, the naming of the building is usually done as like it was before as 52 office suites so i'm what are we doing this um continuing and, yeah, okay so i move for a continuance of this item with direction is there a second a second Okay, call the roll, please. Oh, uh, sorry, Chair, interrupt briefly. Just so that the record's as clear as possible, we are going to ask the board secretary to call out the names of the members that are absent, just so it's clear okay. that they're still absent. This thing, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and I just have one question, please. I, yeah, I have one Is question there, as well. Um, motion to postpone or continue with direct, which is, it? Which is the it, motion? Whichever, you, whichever wording you prefer. They're, they're operatively going to be the same. I had four point of clarification if the motion maker wants to say it was for the purpose of, you know, proceeding with direction or postponement, it's, it's going to be the same result either way. Yeah. I, I got one comment though. Can I, isn't it also, isn't another issue that it's on the second floor, the main sign, because apparently that's not the convention. Yeah, we just discussed that. Is that also going to be part of the, the next? I, if, yes, I will elaborate on that. I can make it more clear and maybe give some examples. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Okay. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. 
Nick Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Price Patton? Yes. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Since you said quasi-judicial, Mr. Grant, are you going to make us repeat that people were not here on every vote? Yeah, on every vote, correct, yes. Okay, that brings us to uh, item 8B. Is it 8B or 9B? 8B. 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 Uh, Delaware Country Club 2022-041. Uh, state your name and address. And Keith Beal, Curry Sour Zagala Architects, 185 Northeast 4th Avenue, Delray Beach. Go ahead, make your presentation. We'll, we'll give uh, city staff. Oh, I'm sorry, city, <laughs> city presents, right, sorry. Good evening, Hi. Rachel Falcone, Planner, City of Delray Beach, entering agenda item 8B into the record for Delray Country Club, file number 2022-104 for consideration of class three site plan modification associated with the construction of three pickleball courts, um, the construction of a covered outdoor dining area along the clubhouse and renovations to the existing pool and playground. And the applicant is here for a presentation. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the club is just looking to you know renew, refresh as they do every few years. You could just do us a favor and uh, try to speak in the mic as much Sorry. as possible. And it it moves, so if you want to stand more to the side, so yeah. I can see it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we're proposing about a roughly fourteen hundred square foot covered patio out behind the members' grill. Um, and then we're also proposing a larger dining, outdoor dining patio with some umbrellas there on the uh, more than the north side of the clubhouse. This is all facing east, facing the golf course. Um, primarily, it's just upgrade and, and getting more outdoor dining for, for all the residents and uh, club members, not increasing any type of uh, no membership increases. It's all staying the same. Um, bit closer look up at the uh, covered patio uh, entrance through nano walls which are being proposed as well from the clubhouse into the covered patio and this are the very well landscape screened pickleball courts basically we have an eight-foot fence uh, surrounding the three pickleball courts this would be uh, right now I'm kind of looking towards the south as I would be exiting the community um, Nobody want, none of the residents want to see it, but they want to be able to play with it. As you can see, this would be your entrance coming in from Military Trail heading east. Again, it's just really a big wall of landscaping. Uh, primarily, Calusha hedges will be the taller hedge going up to that eight foot mark. And then ground cover and other plantings at the lower end. This is again another view uh, on the south side, again, exiting community so it's really screened very well from from any of the roadways in the community and then inside the parking lot which would be uh, the clubhouse would be behind us here in this case that there's uh, three shade structures that will accompany the pickleball courts and uh, we have some lighting and fans out there just for uh, keep the air moving and a water cooler other than that it's pretty simple no night play no uh, no court lighting nothing like that it'll be dust to dawn event and that, that's it. Questions? Chair, while the city's loading its presentation, we do ex parte. Oh, I forgot. Any ex parte communication? Um, no. I don't think I could have gotten in there if I'd wanted to. <laughs> Comments. Okay, so the property is located um, at 4645 White Cedar Lane in the Delaware Country Club, and it is zoned R1AA with uh, community facilities, future land use. The request is uh, to implement pickleball courts, three pickleball courts, and the installation of the black fence surrounding it, as well as the construction of three shade structures to accommodate the pickleball courts, as well as clubhouse renovations on the rear of the clubhouse. They will be doing renovations to the existing pool and playground area and the construction of a new um, 1900 square foot covered outdoor dining area with um, associated columns and lighting as well. Uh, here you can see the pickleball court and shade structures outlined in red and blue. Uh, they do meet the setback requirements 
and um, the screening requirements as well. And outlined in the red is the proposed outdoor dining area and in the blue they will be reconfiguring the existing paver patio by adding umbrellas and whatnot. The landscaping is in compliance with their landscaping requirements set forth in the code and um, they're proposing new planting materials around the proposed pickleball courts as well as the outdoor dining area and um, in the playground area as well. The parking meets the parking requirements. It, they are uh, removing three standard parking spaces and um, providing an additional handicap space, but it does meet the parking requirements. Um, here are the clubhouse renovations, the, the existing pool and playground areas being affected, and these are the modifications outlined in red with the outdoor dining and the um, paver, existing paver patio area as well as the pool bar area. The eastern elevation, which is facing the rear, will have the outdoor dining area with the nano doors and lighting, and then this is the existing paver um, area that will have the umbrellas. And um, this is a southern elevation. You can see the new outdoor dining area. The northern elevation facing the pool area, they'll be implementing some of these railings uh, that match the existing on site and some awnings above the archways and um, planter boxes. The, uh, the proposed modifications do meet the architectural review criteria and um, all the colors and materials will match the existing on site. Um, it does meet the LDR section 311 for the required finding as, as well, and um, as well as the sections in 245. And um, there were courtesy notices sent out to the neighbors. I did not hear from any. And um, that concludes my presentation. Okay, is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this project? Seeing none, public comments closed. Any rebuttal? Mr. Beal? Rachel covered everything pretty clearly. Um, if there's anything I can help clarify, if anybody has any questions, do the best that I can. And you're good? No rebuttal. No rebuttal? Okay, so it goes to board discussion. Carol? Okay, I'll start. Um, so around the pickleball courts, how high is the hedge going in to begin with? They want to do a planting it at eight feet. Oh, wow. They want it to go to the top of the fence. They're not going to grow it in? Good. And then it looks like this, um, on the screen here, there's just a bunch of squares everywhere. It's really hard to read the landscape plan from what I'm viewing here. Um, okay. What, what kind of palms are going around that? Um, looks like there's some palms on the outside of the pickleball court by the road. Okay. I wish I had the answer on that, Carol. I don't have the landscape plans on me, uh, with me. Um, I mean, I think everything else is pretty straightforward. I was, I was wondering about the screening for the uh, pickleball courts mostly, and I think a uh, eight-foot hedge is very substantial, so you won't see that at all. I mean, I do see that there's some royal palms out there by the street. Um, maybe they're Alexander palms. And my only other comment was on that south side of the uh, the dining patio. I mean, the rendering looks great, and I see the landscape plan. They're probably going to want some more shade out there, though. <laughs> but that's for them to decide. Yeah, they typically already facing east. Their morning sun, which very few people are at the bar mm -hmm. in the morning, I believe. <laughs> uh, so it's more of an afternoon evening patio. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's those are my comments. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. No, I'm good. I had the same cons concerns about the shade, but ask and answered. Thank you. Well, I had the same concern about the, the fence and whether it would be visible at first, but if you're going to plant the hedge, it's going to yes. cover it up right away. So yep. Good. Yep. That's something the residents requested. They want it screened so they don't see it when they're coming in, coming out. That's good. 
Okay, I think that concludes uh, board discussion. Does anyone have a, a um, we're to there, right? Yeah. Anyone have a motion? Slide for the motion. Mm -hmm. I'll move approval of the request for the class three site plan modification 2022-041 landscape plan and architectural elevations for Del Air Country Club located at 4645 White Cedar Lane by finding that the request is consistent the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Cheryl Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. We move to item um, 8C. Yes. Okay. Ms. Falcon presents again. Yes, entering agenda item 8C into the record for Gunther Volkswagen, file number 2020 066, for consideration of a class three site plan modification for the construction of a showroom service reception addition to the existing structure demolition of the existing office building and reconstruction of a new office showroom building as well as uh, site improvements such as site lighting and landscaping and parking and the applicant is here to give a presentation good evening get state your name and address sure. good evening my name is kevin cruz architect with the styles architectural group at 201 east las olas boulevard for lauderdale and i'm here like rachel mentioned um, to present the counter volkswagen renovation and addition at 2401 North Federal Highway, Delray Beach. And the, the west elevation is what represents the front elevation for the Vos, Gunther Volkswagen existing building. Um, as you can see, um, we are adding a 3,800 square foot uh, addition to the south side of this building, to the southwest south, uh, side of the building. Um, I would like to show you how that looks on site. So the top, the top, um, top, top yellow rectangle of that um, of that site, it's the existing BW building. Uh, we also are replacing or renovating, well, replacing an existing office building, which is the one in the center. Um, this is an existing site plan. What we see here in blue, it's what the addition will look like uh, for the VW building. And also, more or less, um, for the office building, it's going to be more or less the same square footage, around 3,800 square feet. Going back to the Volkswagen building, uh, the intention is to renovate the existing conditions of this building, adding um, a service reception area. Then again, this is going to be located more towards the uh, North Federal Highway side. We're following the same setback um, that was approved at the Volvo, during the Volvo approval a few years ago to kind of go in line with uh, that front driveway at the, at the west side of the, of the site. This is the new office building that is going to be located in the center or at the south side of this parcel. Um, then again, we're trying to follow the same architectural language of the adjacent building. Uh, white stucco, white, white smooth stucco with um, clear anodized aluminum storefront and a couple canopies. This is going to be a, a much better condition than what the existing building looks like. Um, Going back to the site, uh, another thing that we're doing uh, on this renovation, it's improving the conditions of the existing site. We are improving the drainage. We're improving the, the, the landscape requirements. Uh, we're also improving the curbs and the circulation around the site. Um, originally, we, we, we understood that we were an existing non-conforming site, um, but after some conversations with the, with the with the staff, we understood that we needed to, to improve the condition of the landscape, and that's what we did. We're infilling a lot of a few parking spaces to, to comply with that requirement. 
And that pretty much concludes my presentation. This is Falcon. Chair again while city is. Ex parte, ex parte. Yep. I was going to say it. <laughs> Any ex parte? No. 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 Okay. Proceed. All righty. So the property is located at 2401 North Federal Highway in the Automotive Commercial Zoning District. And um, it is surrounded by general commercial zoning, um, but on the eastern portion, it is Town of Gulfstream, which is single family. So I would like to give you background on the site. The property contains Gunther Volkswagen and Gunther Volvo. Um, it is joined by a unity of title. So the <coughs> portion of the site we're focusing on today is the northern portion that's highlighted. Uh, but back in 2017, Gunther Volvo came in for a class five site plan modification and um, constructed a new building with a parking garage. And um, after this was approved, they asked to, they had a unity of title put into place as well as conditions for that project. So the subject request for this proposal is the construction of a 3,800 square foot showroom service reception addition on the existing 18,000 square foot Gunther Volkswagen structure and it's highlighted in blue, and um, they will be demolishing the existing 4,000 square foot office building and reconstructing in the same footprint, um, essentially in the center of the site. Uh, they will also uh, install a wall enclosure around the fuel tank area, which is located at the rear of the property, and um, the installation of an eight foot wall along the eastern portion of the property line, as well as landscape and hardscape improvements throughout the site. The, uh, the proposals do meet the setback requirements as well as open space and height. And um, the addition on the Gunther Volkswagen structure here does exceed the minimum distance requirement um, of 100 feet to any residentially zoned district, which is on the east. Uh, the landscaping d is in compliance with our landscaping requirements set forth in the code. They will be adding new planting materials and reconfiguring landscape islands to bring them up to compliance. And um, they'll add some planter boxes along the new um, additions as well. The site lighting is in compliance, and I wanted to note that the illumination and displays uh, will be reduced to 50-foot candles after 11 p.m. as well. Uh, as for off-street parking, it is in compliance. Uh, the parking throughout the site is in compliance. Um, they have removed a few parking spaces to accommodate the addition and the new construction of the office building, but um, every they are meeting their parking requirement. So now we are getting into the elevations for the portion of the addition on the main Gunther Volkswagen structure. And this elevation is facing a federal highway. They'll be adding the storefront window system and the overhead doors for the service area. And um, everything will be in the smooth snucko to match the existing structure. And uh, this is the eastern elevation, which essentially mimics the western that faces the right of way. On the southern elevation interior to the site, they'll add the aluminum storefront systems and the two entry doors. And um, moving on to the office building, it is in the center of the site they, facing North Federal Highway. They are implementing the storefront system to match the other structure and a metal canopy for the entrance. And um, the southern elevation, which faces interior, will also contain the storefront systems and a fixed window and a door. Um, as for the northern and eastern elevation, they are very similar. They'll contain the fixed windows, and the eastern elevation has a ladder to get to the roof. The architectural elevations and aesthetics do meet the code requirements in 4618E, and um, all the modifications will match the existing colors and materials of the dealership to create a seamless transition from the new to the older. And um, it does meet all the required findings set forth in 245. 
and um, all the required findings for land use map, concurrency, consistency, and compliance with the LDRs are um, met. And um, there were public courtesy notices sent to the surrounding areas. Uh, we did receive a call from the town of Gulfstream just asking questions, but um, those were answered and there were no other concerns. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Um, does any member for the public wish to comment? Seeing none, we got a rebuttal. Mr. Cruz? No rebuttals. No. We go to board. Anybody want to jump in there? Uh, I have a quick question. The, the location of the lighting that will be reduced after 11 p.m., is that front-facing residential? All right. That's going to be the side lighting um, throughout the, the, the eastern side, especially. What time do you close for business? That will be around 9 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. I think 11 is a little late for that dimming of the lights. There, there might be some customers that might stay after the, the doors close, trying to finalize some, some agreements and things of that sort. But um, we, we actually went ex uh, had a extensive conversations with Town of Goldstream uh, in regards to this you know, back in 2016 and 2017. And because the Volvo development was much, much bigger and actually the light bulbs went much higher on the third floor parking deck. Um, so they, they seemed to agree at that time, uh, and we felt comfortable to, to mimic that this time around. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think um, I agree with staff. It blends in uh, seamlessly your addition, and it, it even looks like the addition to the main building, there was a structure there already, or was there a canopy? So you're just really making it a, closing it in as a building? Was it an overhang before, or? You're talking about the main building, the Gunther Volkswagen building? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, th there was a wing to the building that now we're going to go ahead and, and, and add to it in front of that wing. Okay. So in reality, yeah, if, if you would have, if you were going now and, and look at the building, um, you might think that there is some type of protrusion right now, mm -hmm. uh, which was the original design of the building, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, and you've got lots of landscape on here, and uh, so you're building a wall on the east side foot wall so. right oh. yes right. we're gonna continue the wall that comes from the south parcel okay yeah I don't have any issue with it thanks um, can you go to slide 15 I wanted to see something uh, and then the next slide <clears throat> Were there any, you said there were there comments from any or, neighbors or Gulfstream oh, or something? Or? So the town of Gulfstream did contact staff and asked a few questions about the project, the scope of project, and they were all answered um, regarding just what the actual construction was going to be and the lighting and landscaping and whatnot. Um, but all the questions. Does it abut Gulfstream? It does. So I can pull up the location map again. Give me one moment. That's so right. that's Gulfstream. Yes, Stream, along the eastern property line, this is town of Gulfstream. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. They know about the fence. The mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. They the proposed fence is actually matching the one that was approved with the Gunther Volvo dealership. So it'll, it'll match. Okay, yeah, I don't have any further. What is the material of the fence? It's not a chain link, is it? Is it a CMU? Fence? Yeah. No, it's actually gonna be a precast wall. Cement. Um, yeah, it's gonna look pretty nice. Uh, it's, got, uh, it's got texture to it. Uh, it's going to mimic what we have currently in Volvo, which then again was an agreement. Originally, we wanted you, our side walls are usually six feet high, um, but we we come into an agreement that that will be an eight foot wall, precast wall. 
And there's no landscape in the outside, so what, what color are you painting it? The wall, I believe it's going to be light gray, but it's going to be surrounded by landscape um, on the west side of that wall. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about the east side of the wall. You're not putting landscaping on the east side of the wall. No, we, that, that's not part of our property, yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and if I may, um, we are tremendously improving the condition of that wall. Um, it, it's an old side wall right now, so I'm pretty sure that the, the neighbors are going to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, I'm surprised. I guess I figured there had to be a wall there by now, but so this is, you're rebuilding the wall and you're bringing it up to eight feet. We're replacing the wall. Replacing it. Okay. More comments? Sure. I'm for a motion. A move approval of the request for the class three slide plan modification 2020-066 landscape plan and architectural elevation for Gunther Volkswagen located at 2201 and 2401 North Federal Highway by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. And the opposed Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Bob Maru is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Okay, moving on to uh, item 8D, the Lion Townhomes 2021-195. Any ex parte communication? No. 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 Okay. Here she comes. Sorry, we can't hear in there. <laughs> I just saw the change. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer Buse again from Development Services. Um, put into record file number 2021-195, and this is agenda item 8D. And the applicant is here. My name is Jared Collin with Collin Builders presenting Lynn Townhomes. My address is 802 Shore Drive, Boynton Beach. Um, all right, I'm um, gonna start things off from the location. Um, we're on the corner of Northeast 7th Court and Northeast 8th Ave, uh, just off George Bush Boulevard next to St. Vincent's Church. Next, we're gonna move on to existing conditions. Here's the view on Northeast 8th Ave, just to the front. Here's of the corner, and here is the north side. As you can see, it's already multifamily. Um, and we are proposing uh, the construction of three two story townhomes. Um, they're all going to be around 2,200 to 2,700 square feet. Um, we're doing a site wall about six feet tall, um, brick pavers, and pools for all three units. Um, we got a pretty extensive landscape plan. Um, we really tried hard to make the uh, modern elevation pop. You can see here from the elevations, it really does look quite good. Uh, the landscape shown on the elevations is not representative, not representative of the plan. Uh, this was done before the landscape plan received a couple of revisions. Here is the east elevation. It um, doesn't show the site wall wrapping down the side. Uh, this shows all the zoning and surrounding zoning. Uh, here are all the required findings, and I found that we met them all. Uh, the architectural elevation analysis. Um, I know Jennifer's going to touch on this later, so I'm just going to kind of move quickly through all this, all the site plan findings, um, and then requested action of just basically approve the site plan architectural elevations and landscape plan since it is in compliance with all LDR codes and the always Del Rey um, comprehensive plan. So, thank you.
Okay, this is Lynn Townhomes. The zoning is RM, and the property is about uh, 0.33 acres, and the um, the loom is medium density. The adjacent zoning is north is uh, general commercial, south is RM, east is the community facilities, which is St. Vincent's, and west is RM as well. It is existing land use is multifamily residential. It is four units now, and the proposed land use is multifamily residential, which will be three townhomes. These are some condi uh, existing conditions proposed. This is the site plan. I blocked out the yellow here. Uh, they have already been in for a five-foot dedication, and um, this just shows the five-foot dedication that they have done. It does meet all of the uh, LDR sections in 4.3.4K, which is your lot width, your floor area, your open space, your setbacks. Uh, the performance standards, um, this is for, this project is considered a small infill residential development, so therefore some of them are not applicable to this section. They meet two of the standards and they meet one of them partially. The one that they meet partially is um, a variety of unit types and sizes and floor plans. Each, each unit is a little bit different in size. Um, they do have to plat. Um, it's a requirement in 4.3.302. Um, again, I'm just showing here where they went in for a five foot right away dedication first. This makes it a minor plat, which will um, go straight to city commission as opposed to a major plat that will go to, would go to PZ and then um, city commission. With the landscaping, as you can see, the sidewalk is kind of jutting out a little bit. With the code section of 4.6.16H4, uh, they were required one street tree for each um, 40 linear feet of street frontage. This was worked through with the engineer and um, the land senior landscape planner. So in order to meet this requirement, um, the sidewalk was curved. Um, so that they did not have to give up any more um, dedication and um, the trees will require a right-of-way, uh, a landscape maintenance agreement as some of them are in the right-of-way. This is, um, again, these are some of the elevations. It is a two-story building containing three townhomes, um, units totaling about 9,000 9, square feet. The architecture is defined with characteristics of masonry modern with the flat roofs and um, the box-like uh, elements. Here again, these are CB walls with a smooth stucco finish which will be painted in Olympus white. The garage doors painted in Earl Grey. They have the flat roofs, ver vertical and horizontal windows. The balcony walls have wood tile, wall treatments, and the eyebrows and canopy over the garage doors. The block wing walls on the second floor is also a common element of the masonry modern architecture. Um, again, the eyebrows proposed over the rear sliding glass doors um, and masonry perimeter wall with aluminum entry gates. This um, was not reviewed by others. It was not uh, applicable and the Palm Trail HOA did receive a notice twice as this was scheduled for March 9th and um, the notice went out again with this March 23rd, um, 23rd. board meeting. Um, I did not get any um, letters of, of ejection or support. These are the findings that need to be made um, for class five. You have your landscape plan findings and you have your architectural elevation findings. Again, your required findings with the land use map, which um, is compatible. Um, you have your concurrency, which all of them were met, the consistency, and the compliance with the L LDRs, which can be found in a positive. Um, there are several comprehensive plans which are supported, and the neighborhood and districts and corridor element. And 
a few technical notes, um, as I stated before. Um, one that I did not go over is the street lighting poles um, should be installed by FPNL and the city's existing light contract shall be modified. These are also, um, I believe, in the right of way. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public, from the dwindling public, who would like to yes. comment? Please come to the uh, po podium and state your name and address. Yeah, the one to your left. Hi, I'm Jill Schifferly, uh, representing the Palm Trail Homeowners Association. Um, and just uh, one brief comment about this um, project. There uh, currently, well, two. <laughs> Currently, there are lots of trees on the lot, and we are and have been for a few years trying to encourage a lot more street trees in the neighborhood. So I'm sure some of those trees will be going away, but um, we'd like to see as many of them on the street as possible to soften that. And the only other thing is I do believe that the monument sign for the HOA is on the lot, and we have worked with other homeowners in the past to move the sign um, if it needs to be moved, if it's in, in the way or in the right of way. So we'd like to request that the sign either be moved or re-established um, elsewhere if it's in the way of current plans. I don't know if... It's not on the property. It's not? I was told it was. Okay. So it won't, it won't be impacted by this. Good. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, is, do you have any rebuttal? No. Any rebuttal? I do not. Okay, to the board. Stephen, you haven't started yet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there's a lot going on here, that's for sure. So. I'm trying to understand. Are there going to be fences? It's hard to tell. Are there yes, fences around the property? Yes, there's going to be a six-foot site wall. It's all going to be a block wall with stucco finish. Um, okay. It's going to match the color of the house, but it's all going to be heavily landscaped in front, so a lot of it's going to be covered. It's right here. Oh, what? Here? That is the rear elevation. There. Oh, okay, the front. It's right there. See it over there on the right side. It, you and right here. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so that yeah, that's going to be going all the way around it. That. Okay. It's just going to wrap around the street sides, and then a chain link's going to go on the back, and it's going to be heavily landscaped. Right. All right, and uh, let's see here. So everybody has their own driveway. Mm. Okay. And like what so what what's in between the driveways? It says front. What, what is that? See on the lower left there? What is that what's there? Is that grass? That's just grass right there. There's also trees intermixed. Okay. So if we pull up the landscape plan. Okay. And so the, the fence is on the other side of the sidewalk, right? Yes. Okay. It's, yeah, there's a lot going on here. So the little, the little, uh, the little notches there. In the sidewalk? Yeah. That there's going to be a tree or. Yeah, there's going to be a tree of, in every. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. That, that's. Uh, the sidewalk had to be bumped out in order to meet the landscape um, right. requirement. Or trees every spaced every so often. Yes. Um, this was not the ideal sidewalk. Um, this was something that both the senior landscape planner and the engineer came to agreement on. I see. Okay. What is it? What is city swale? What does that mean? City swale. That's just for drainage. Uh, so instead of just making a straight sidewalk that was further out because, because of the distance between the street, maximize that? It was 
it would have impeded more on the city swale. I see. Okay. All right. So then the rear is is a is a is a chain link fence. You're saying? Yes. Well, what, yeah. Okay. Covered by lots of yeah, lots of vegetation, all kinds of hedges. Imagine that trees. Yeah. you're not going to want to. No. Nah, that we're trying to cover it all up. There's a bunch of power poles back there and utility lines. Okay. Uh, is there any requirement for the minimum height of fences for pools in? Um, it it's have to be surrounded. Well, by. the pools, it's it's considered like the pool barrier. It's six feet is the required height, um, what for fences. Okay. And it could actually in the rear go up to eight feet. Well, how how high is that fence? It's going to be six all the way around okay. the property. All right. So, in, in the Palm Beach HOA, what where does that? Palm trail. Palm trail. Is that just, is this on that? Um, it wasn't that... shown on any survey or anything like that. No. Um, I, I personally, I've never seen it on that property. So. But, but that's the area around it? Uh, where the south of the way controls? That's the area south of it. Okay. Right. Okay, I don't have any further questions. Uh, so. Okay. Thank you. On that, or? No, I, I want to hear what Carol says about the trees on the property. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I do have some concerns um, also with the elevations. So in the front elevation, you have the driveway going in, um, not, the, not the middle unit, but um, oh, the east. Yeah. so you have that garage right there, and then above it, you have these windows that are very small and on the other elevations, you've been able to kind of hide that facade, but that's just like a big blank wall, and I think it's glaring, and you can't put anything in front of it because you have a driveway. There's nothing to soften that wall, so that's my, that's one of the things I see that's a we problem with the elevation. Put an awning there just to kind of break it up, along with a great tinted window to just kind of. Mesh. Oh, you'd have to show us that though. If you, you know, I'm just let me. I'll just go through and tell you my my issues, but okay, that's one of them. Um, I know this isn't your fault, but I think the sidewalk is extremely silly. Um, no one is going to want to walk around, um, except if maybe if you're six, you can probably like enjoy walking around those trees. But um, yeah, it would have been better, like Steve said, if it was brought out um, to that line and you just have a straight shot sidewalk. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. So I understand there's a swale problem, but I just don't think that that's a, I don't think that's a valid. Um, sidewalk you know even if it maybe had a tree grade or something would be better well one thing I would point out is that that's the city right-of-way so he's actually placing the trees in city right-of-way in order to comply with the landscape plan which is why the sidewalk has those juts in it <clears throat> my understanding is that the it was more advantageous to have those um, bump outs because the swale is designed to collect, water. To collect the, the water and disperse it. Um, but really the issue is created because the, the street trees are in the city right of way and not on the applicant's private property. And, and why aren't the trees on the applicant's property? Based on the code, we had to put them there in the right of way. In order to meet this section of the code, um, they had to put them in the city right away. Um, where is it? In order to meet this section of the code, um, this, this, as I said, it went round and round. This was not the ideal thing for the city engineer. This was a request by the C senior landscape planner. Um, and this is the result of it. Um, they, they, the senior landscape planner actually wanted them the, to go out five more feet, and the city engineer did not want that due to the swale issue because of, of it being a city right away. Um, and this is the end result. Yeah, I don't, why can't they just go on the property though and just count as street trees? It's still adjacent to the sidewalk, and then you could make the sidewalk straight. 
Like, is there a reason? I see there's uh, exfiltration there, but it looks like you have a good five feet between the exfiltration and that property line, and I don't know why they can't put on the property. They're just trees. It'd be the same thing, but you wouldn't have all those jogs on the sidewalk. Well, that's, so that's one of my things. And then in the back, so your middle unit, you really can't access the landscape from that unit unless you go through the house. Is that, like, is people wanted to landscape that backyard, and then uh, they wanted to have maintenance for it. How do you? There's gates in between <laughs> each one. So uh, everybody's able to go, like, that's public access. It's not necessarily public access. Um, there'd probably be some kind of agreement. Um, for maintenance, I'm, I'm sure for all three units, they'd set, they'd set up the same uh, maintenance and they just go from house to house. Like there's going to be a gate there to service the different units in the back. So. All right, because I see on uh, the one unit C, you have three trees in the back, and then on unit A, you've got two sable palms in the back, and in unit B, there's nothing except um, it does say that there's an existing bamboo hedgerow, but if you put a yeah. The bam link fence in, then mm -hmm. you're going to probably wreck that. I really don't know what that looks like. The, ba the bamboo hedge is actually really thick there. Um, we're trying to save as much of it as possible. It looks great. Um, we've been growing it for years. So that's one thing that we're really trying to save throughout this entire process. So I'm concerned about that, too, because I really don't know what it'd look like. But I would okay. be kind of upset if I were that homeowner to that's the their side, and then you have a chain link fence, and you you know there's no screening there for that homeowner. Where is that? Uh, it's in the rear of the property to okay. the uh, south side, uh, back where all the pools are. Okay. So, I mean, I, that's, those are my issues. I know you have a lot of plant material in the front, and, and, and I'm, I commend you on using native plant material. I think that's great. I, I don't really have a, other than the back, and that, those are my issues. Yeah, we tried to include as much as possible, but we were pretty limited on space. Um, and we were really relying on the existing bamboo there. It, uh, if you ever go to the site, it's quite dense. So. Yeah, I didn't drive by the site, but I, I would be concerned when you put your fence in that you're going to mess it up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably have to see some photos or something. I yeah, I, I, I could drive have by. A photo. Yeah. I'd... Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So the middle unit, are you, is the homeowner able to plant back there? If he went through the house, right? Or well, if he goes through the neighbor's yard a, while they're in their pool, <laughs> I don't know. What's the term for that? Where you can go, we can go on somebody's property to. Um, there, there's a term for there's a there's a it's property term for be in essence like an access easement. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, I'm, an access easement is already detailed in the plans actually for utilities uh, primarily. But that's how they will get there through that easement. Yeah. Now this one has me a little baffled. So I, I heard a question I, that you asked Miss Gray mm -hmm. about plantings and just so that we understand when the project is constructed the landscape material will be installed. So if a homeowner wishes to make any changes to that um, landscape configuration that's in, in the rear, that's pretty common that they would have to coordinate with their neighbors. There's um, probably going to be HOA docs for this as well, I'm assuming, because they're fee simple, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So simple those concept. types of things can be covered under an HOA doc. Yeah. And I just wanted to make sure that as staff, we understood the um, comments that you were making, Ms. Perez, about the bump out in the sidewalk. Um, you know, we discussed it and that this is the plan that's shown here does meet the requirements of the code and has been vetted by the senior landscape planner, the city engineer, and this configuration has been agreed upon um, as acceptable for our standards. If there was something beyond that, um, we're happy to talk it through. I just don't know if I understood what you were saying. If you I were just think it's silly. <laughs> I don't. I don't have anything other than that. I mean, I would not want to be walking around, especially on Seventh Court. You have to walk around three trees. I mean, you're you're going to be walking in a zigzag pattern. And Seventh Court is a short uh, right of way. It 
you have two properties, so you have this property and one other. Um, I think I just think the problem could have been solved if the trees would have been moved, um, you know, five feet over on the person's property, and it wouldn't be a. You could have a straight walkway. Well, then they have to dedicate an easement for that area as well, and that inc that involves other documents. Um, I'm not saying it's a it's something that can't be done. We could certainly look at it if the board wanted to give that direction, but leave some, yeah. leave it open somehow, so we, that if I'm sorry, um, Mr. I agree. Cohen, I, I agree. We've already given a dedication of five feet though for the oh. sidewalk. Um, if we could look at modifying the code to where we could just move the trees to be considered street trees onto our property, that's. So that's exactly what I'm suggesting, but I would suggest you leave it open-ended enough that if it can be negotiated with staff to make that shift, that it can. But if it can't because of site constraints or lot size or something we're not thinking about, that they don't have to come back to the board to make that change. Um, and maybe this will help some too. So this is actually the definition of street trees. I mean, the Appendix A, so it's trees or palms on land lying within public right-of-way or easement. So if you shift the tree five feet onto the property, it's technically no longer a street tree because a street tree is one located within the public right-of-way or easement. So moving it actually eliminates it as a street tree, which then makes him non-compliant. And it, it really is probably just an issue that this right-of-way is not as large um, or can't be as large as we're used to on other projects and so obviously staff as Michelle's mentioned met to figure out what's better for this piece of property in the city and whether that's a straight sidewalk that that in essence creates a division between the swale so it probably could not be graded to the the depth it needs to be versus you know having to create these whimsical pathways around the trees, but maintain, you know, the swale's intention of, of helping with uh, flooding and water drainage in the community. And that middle notch is, is even more severe. It's almost like a right angle, if you look at it. It's like pretty, one between unit B and unit C. So, um, it will provide, I think, some visual interest to the, the street. That's true. Certainly. I, you know, I, I mean, I've seen them around Del Rey. I've certainly seen these notches. Oh, we've seen this type of configuration in the past. Mo most of the time is to accommodate an existing tree. Right. We have a whole street up in the north section of northeast section of town where kind of, the road, you might remember, Price isn't. Yeah. Um, is it Coconut, I think, where the street drops? Oh, where the J. Bob Street what tree was? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, so that would be my suggestion. If it's something that we can do through an easement, you know, with the configuration and organization of the public right of way, street trees, curb zone, pedestrian zone, when we deal with CBD, sometimes we do have street trees landing on property, but there's landscape maintenance agreements and different things that have to go in place that I'm not 100% sure is acceptable in this non CBD area. So I would just suggest if you want to add some kind of direction, that you leave I it mean, open. I, I just have, I had other issues too. I mean, I've got an issue with the chain link fence. I have an issue with the front elevation. I think um, there's not enough landscape in the back. I, you know, I don't know if there's enough landscape in the back. So I've got other, I mean, I, I, I'm in favor of the project. Mm. I just have, um, but I do have some issues that I think need to be cleaned up. It again does meet the intent of the code. And we can, we can't make those her concerns the uh, condition of uh, approval. Or you, again, it's too much designing from the. Yeah, I'd, this panel. The concerns that Carol has raised, I think, would be more in line with designing from the dais if you were going to try to address those concerns through conditions. Yes. Okay then. Um, I I just like to say, as opposed to Carol, when, when I. Um, walk down a sidewalk and the, and the sidewalk goes around a tree, it, it makes me think that somebody's trying to save the tree. <laughs> so, and we've lost so many trees in this town. Um, I think that's, I, I see Carol's point, but uh, that's, uh, and I'm older than six years old, so I still kind of like it. Um, uh, but I, I do, you know, I, I kind of agree with the, um, uh, you know, the, the ch chain link fences, 
you know, is it going to be black? Yeah, it, the goal is to make it disappear. Yeah. Um, would you be amenable to um, continuing this application to another meeting and, and see if you can work out these concerns that have been stated? I would prefer to work it outside of the uh, out of another meeting, but if we have to and there's no other way, we, then we could reschedule. And well, just well, she seems fairly con concerned about those those items, and uh, to me, they don't see other than the other than the uh, the cutouts in the sidewalk for the trees. It seems like something that could be uh, remedied fairly easily. Is, is there something that we could just make a comment now and we could deal with outside and then submit it so somehow? Or no, I, here I might, here. might jump in a little bit. So one thing that um, I advise the board not to do is to amend what's being presented right. at the meeting because it's always possible for the board to be communicating and and the the applicant and the board not to be to be saying the same words but not mean the same thing and so there may be some confusion you as the applicant you have every right to ask for them to make a vote tonight if you want um you know that and you'll be you live with whatever that vote is whether it's an approval or a denial um what the chair is asking is that the board members have expressed concerns about whether they can approve the project for various reasons and it's up to you to decide whether you'd like a final vote from the board tonight or if um, you'd like to take your plans and amend them to address concerns you've heard and then uh, you'll be able to make uh, whatever next available meeting after the plans have been resubmitted mm -hmm. is there a notice requirement michelle um, i mean you don't have a notice Jen? Right? it's courtesy, courtesy only there is a courtesy notice requirement? It's courtesy, but there is no public notice requirement, so a continuation is fine. Okay. It's not going to affect that. Just to put my comments yeah, on sure. the record, I do have some concerns about that middle unit as well, the front and the back, um, the visual appeal of it, okay. the access. So. Well, you've heard the concern, so yeah. we, could, we could either uh, take, take, take a motion to continue, or you, I think you risk the, the, uh, you risk the chance of going down 2-2 two, two or... Three. Yeah, I'd prefer to just make all the adjustments and then come back. Chair, I think staff has something to add before we... I just, I'm sorry. I just want to make a comment um, on the chain link fence. It is extremely common in residential neighborhoods. Uh, I just approved probably about half a dozen today in neighborhoods. It is in the rear. It's not in the front. Um, they... No, they, sir. Sir, public comment's over. I'm sorry. They... they um, they are uh, vegetating it. Um, so I just want to point out to you that chain link fence, fences are very common in residential neighborhoods and are allowed. Okay, thanks. Any more comments? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with Carol also that that one narrow window it does seem kind of sparse. I don't know. I'm not sure why you chose that to do it that way. But that's another comment I have. Okay. I agree with Carol on that one. All right. So if the board is moving to a continuation, I would ask for the purpose of the minutes and the understanding of the applica applicant that you wrap up what the specific comments are with the motion. Yes, please. So <laughs> I actually will advise the opposite. Um, <laughs> you know, the, I because the one of the issues I see is that we have three board members that are absent. Right. And if these four board members were to say these are the issues we had and the applicant goes and he corrects them or changes them and comes back and the three other board members do not agree with those, and we're putting the applicant in a position where one version of this board is saying as long as you do X, Y, and Z, we're good. And then he comes back and the, and the next version of the board, because there may be more members and these members may be absent, you know, that they may, he may not get that same response. And so I don't want there to be any confusion that if you do just these things, that somehow it will, it sure. will okay. change. So, But a continuation would, would give the applicant a chance to assess the, uh, the, the concerns and uh, develop a, a defense for the concerns. Correct. Why he wants to do it that way right. and could be persuasive, but we're not going to tell him 
exactly what the concerns are because right. you've heard them. Yeah, and, and I think the board has communicated. You know, in fact, I think one board member actually listed them almost as bullet points. So, the YouTube the meeting will be on YouTube. So, if, if there's any concerns, that can go back and and it's available online. So the applicant can watch it again. But I would I would advise just a simple motion to continue with direction. Again, does not need to be a date certain because there's no additional notice requirements. And regarding the date, we are temporarily down to one meeting a month. So it will be the fourth Wednesday of April before this can come back. Right. It's a month. I'll move to continue with direction. Second. Or second, okay. Just Rochelle, before you make a roll call, I usually just ask the applicant, are you, you're in agreement with a motion to postpone and, and you would come back? The final judgment. This is plan scrapped. So you would come back to, if it's a motion to postpone, would simply move your application to another meeting. Okay. Um, you have every right tonight to ask for a final vote if you want one. So you have that right tonight if, well, if you'd what's like. What's the final vote entail once it's all said and done? So some of that's unfortunately providing you some advice on your legal rights and what would happen if the board denies it or not. The land development regulations have um, avenues to appeal a denial. Um, so I would encourage you to, to look at those or seek outside counsel on, on what rights you may have. Right. Um, but, but you do have the right, if you want them to vote tonight on the application, they will. If your desire is to take the comments and modify your plans and come back, then the board is giving you that opportunity. Okay. And I guess we'll modify the plans and come back. And you'll also, you'll also probably have seven people up here rather than four. Because here you could, you could lose on a 2-2 vote. Mm. All right. Okay, so uh, do we need to make a motion again? No, the, the motion was pending, and I apologize for the interruption, but I'd just like the applicant to That's say fine. on the record that they... Okay, let's call the roll. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Nick Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Vice Patton? Yes. Thank you. Good luck. So now we're moving on to the next item, uh, 8E, Highland Park Townhomes 2020. 2020. Dash one, is it really 2020? Yes, it is. <laughs> Dash um, 157. Any uh, ex parte? Can I get back? No. no. I had, uh, a, I received a call from and talked to uh, Jack Indecu of the uh, Palm Trail Homeowners Association and Joy Howell owns property there and I did a um, did a drive-by okay so let's enter the case into the record please thank you uh, for the record Elizabeth Issa senior planner with the development services prop Development Services Department, entering into the record city case file number 2020-157, which is the Highland Park Townhomes Class 5 site plan, and the applicant is present. I think you know the drill. Good evening, Mike Cavelli, Cavelli Design, 1209 South Swinton Avenue. Uh, do you have me up here? Okay, we're good. Um, you did you did hear that right? It's it was 2020. Um, this project has been through a lot. It's a really difficult project. We've had and and remember that Federal Highway is FDOT, so we had two or three different resubmissions with various issues with right of way dedication, and then the right of way dedication put us where we weren't in compliance with the streetscape requirements with the different pedestrian clear zones and, and all that. So it took us a number of, of times to get to get that right and then which resulted in redesigning the entire set of buildings uh, to make the site work. So here we are two years later we're ready to go <laughs> and we think we have a really re some really good things to, to, to show you. Um, the project is located on the east side of Northeast 6th Avenue and south of Northeast 4th Street which is I guess the east end of Lake Ida Road. 
and it's fronted on the rear by an alley. Um, it's vacant right now. We, we had a, uh, a waiver request for the location of the uh, civic site. Um, I think you all are aware of that, and that was approved by commission. And we also had a waiver for the corner clip setbacks, which was also approved by commission. We have two internal waiver requests today that are basically the the board, this board can approve those requests. The, the first one is um, with regards to a the width of a landscape strip. Um, this is a um, kind of a, a situation where um, we have a zero side setback so we can move the buildings all the way against the, the, the south property line in this case. And, and, and so um, as a result, you have garages in these units and you need to have a certain amount of back out space from where the edge of the garage door is. We have a wall on the, on the south property line that, that blocks off the, the, the motor cord. And so the result is, is that the only space we have to, in, to fit the back out area with the um, with with the, the edge of the garage is is that we have to narrow up the the landscape strip. This is inside the wall. It's internal to the project, so we we hope that you know this is not an issue. You know when you look at at waivers, these are criteria that it won't adversely affect the neighboring area. This is internal, so the neighboring area won't see it. It doesn't diminish the provisions of public facilities. It doesn't create an unsafe situation. It actually helps us create the safe position situation by allowing enough back out area. And that it it does not result in granting a privilege. Anybody could ask for this and they could they, they could move forward uh, you know with this. So in addition to that one, and so positive findings can be made for all that, in addition to, to, to that waiver, we have uh, an issue of um, a deficiency of, of uh, shade trees versus palm trees. If you look at the blue teal color area on, on this exhibit, those are all the areas that qualify as internal landscape areas. So in that area, we have 1,509 square feet. And the requirement by code is, is that you need a tree for shade tree for every 125 square feet, which means we need 12 trees. So the code also allows you to take 25% of those trees and make them palms. So we basically need nine shade trees and we can have three palms to meet the requirement. In this particular case, because of the, the way the motor cord is and everything, we only have room for eight shade trees. So we're deficient one shade tree, but we do have 20 palms within the interior. So what we're asking for is that, that we make up the difference for that one shade tree with all the additional palms that we, that we have uh, in, internally. And, and again, as a waiver, it, it doesn't affect the, the neighborhood because it's internal to project. It doesn't diminish uh, any kind of uh, public facilities. It does not create an unsafe position. And it isn't a special privilege because I know that this has been granted on other projects. So uh, positive finding could be made for this waiver. So in terms of, of the site plan, um, it's a 30 unit building um, with a motor cord. We've redesigned this motor cord, I don't know how many times with the fire department. Um, we have access off a of federal highway and as well as the alley and at the north end there is a uh, an emergency gate that allows a fire truck to get out of the motor court or into the motor court if, if they had to. Um, we through all the negotiations we did with FDOT we actually have parallel parking spaces being added on Federal Highway. Um, those are not part of our required parking count. Those are public spaces that we're adding that, that of course, anybody that came to visit this, this site could park there, but anyone else from the public could also park there. Um, and, and if you, you see the, the way the sidewalk is on the, on the 6th Avenue side, 
you'll see that where the parking spaces are, there are little bump outs of the sidewalk that, that actually provide access to anyone parking in those parallel spaces so they don't have to climb over landscaping. But we have landscape nodes between all of those, those, those different areas. Um, this meets the, all the streetscape standards. That actually exceeds the streetscape standards because the sidewalk gets much wider in some areas. Um, it's, a, it's a frontage design that, that utilizes stoops for access. So these units have access both from the motor court side as well as the, the, the federal highway side. Um, on, the, on the alley, um, we've done something I don't think has been done in the city. Um, we've dedicated the right of way to get a 20 foot alley in there. And as, as you know, most alleys in town are pretty ugly. Um, they're usually service areas. And so what we've decided to do was because of, of how you access these units, um, when, you know, there's a lot of, of projects where you enter the project through the garage and you don't really have a front door anywhere. So in this case, we've actually created a streetscape in the alley. Um, we've added 13 parallel parking spaces. There's a sidewalk next to those parking spaces. And again, there are stoop, uh, entrances into the the units from that side so again you can enter from the motor court or you can enter from from the surrounding street um, there's also two charging stations in those parallel spaces so so anyone with electric vehicles can park and recharge um, and and we've provided some landscape nodes uh, that normally you don't have in, in an alley um, in addition, there's landscaping along the front of, of the buildings as well. We, we feel like this is a unique approach to an alley. Um, you know, I've worked, I have some other, other projects I'm working in town and the alleys are horrible at night. They're dangerous, they're, people dump things. We feel like this puts eyes on the street, it puts activity, it creates safety. We, we feel that this is a really good approach to, to dealing with the alley. Um, so the, the site is uh, 1.36 acres. It's got 34 story townhouse units, um, two and three bedroom units with elevators. The internal motor court does access two car garages on every unit. Um, we've provided a 2,588 square foot civic site. Um, there's a recreational pool area. Um, we just talked about the alley and the streetscape with parallel parking and, and vehicular charging stations. Um, the landscape plan is difficult to read at this level. Um, so we've tried to interpret this to graphics for you. Um, likewise, the building elevations uh, are very difficult to see the character of the buildings at, at this level. If you take a section of it and add color, uh, it helps you a little bit with the, the look of the building, but still you can't appreciate the elevations. So what we've done is we've created as accurate as possible renderings of the buildings. So you can, you can appreciate how the architecture translates to a 3D version of that. Um, you, there's balconies on the second and third floor and, and the upper level is, has a big step back with a terrace. Um, the landscaping shown in this plan is indicative of the landscaping that, that we are proposing. Uh, we've removed the street trees so that you can see the architecture and the colors and the materials of the building. And here is with the street trees. We, we think we've created a really great uh, streetscape on this, on this project um, that, that people will really enjoy living here and walking in this, in this area. Looking from the south end of Federal Highway to the north, th this is just another view of, of uh, the similar building so that you can see the architecture again without the landscape, the, the streetscape. Um, and then here, here it is with the street trees added into, into the, um, the, the, the rendering. Um, and this is a view that would be like from across Federal Highway so you can get a better view just looking straight on because on the angle the street trees tend to block um, a lot of the facade. But this gives you a, a really accurate representation of what this would look like as you drove down Federal Highway. On the back of the Federal Highway buildings, um, again, the elevations are very difficult to see in, in, in this, this kind of a, of a 
2D uh, look. And even when you add the color to it, it, it doesn't really help in seeing the, the, the motion of the, of the different planes. But here's what the motor court would look like. Um, and you could see the detailing. And again, um, here's the, the palm trees that we talked about in some of the areas that, that are between the buildings. Um, on the alley, there, there we created a, a, a frontage, um, as, I, as I said before, in terms of the streetscape uh, with porch entrances or, or stoop entrances. Um, here is, is the, the coloration of a section of that building, but this really gives you the detail in the, in the movement in the facades and, and all of the materials that are being proposed. Uh, this also gives you a much better look at how the streetscape is being created in the alley with regards to the, the, uh, the parking and the, the landscaping and, and the sidewalk. And this is just another view looking at, at that from a different direction, just so you could see some of the materials that are within the building. Um, same thing with the, the rear of the building. Um, it, it's similar to the other building with the, the, what I just showed you. So the motor quarters pretty much looks fairly similar with the garage doors in, in that motor court. Part of the redesign of this over the, the number of things was originally the garage doors were facing the alley and we chose to turn it around and put all the garage doors in the motor court and, and provide streetscapes on both sides, which we think is a much better project. Um, there are some amenities. Um, we have a civic site and we have a pool area. Um, the civic site is, uh, really get, provides a break in the long facade of buildings that, that by positioning it in the middle of the site so we have light and air in, in the middle of this rather than it be in a cavern with a long building uh, fronting on, on, on either the alley or Federal Highway. You see the pool in the background here that also tends to break up the, the long line of buildings. Um, this would be the, the view of the civic site from uh, Federal Highway. There are bike racks, uh, trash receptacles, people and dog, water fountains, seats, all of the things that are required by code to be in, in this type of a civic site. And this gives you another view for as you're entering the project looking to the north and this gives you also a good idea of what the streetscape is with the sidewalk and, and how that will actually look. With regards to the, to the uh, pool area, this is a, a view looking down on the alley. You can, you can appreciate the, the landscape nodes, the parallel parking, the sidewalk and then see, see how the little pool area is. This is really a plunge pool, not a swimming pool. Um, but, but it just gives you a, a, an idea of the images of, of what that looks like. And the, the renderer forgot to put the chairs in, but, <laughs> but you get the idea. And that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. I forgot to ask about ex parte. Oh, we did. We did ex I yeah. remember to do it. Oh, OK. Your turn. Thank you. Again, for the record, uh, Elizabeth Issa, Senior Planner with the Development Services Department. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Subject site is located at 375 and 395 Northeast 6th Avenue, uh, US 1, on the southeast corner of the intersection of Northeast 6th Avenue and Northeast 4th Street. The site is currently vacant and is zoned Central Business District within the Commercial Core Neighborhood Subdistrict and has a compatible future land use designation of Commercial Core. The proposal includes a 30-unit townhome development. Um, the townhomes are composed of five four-story buildings with units that contain three to four... You said two to three. It's a, it's two to three, so that's incorrect. Sorry, it's two to three bedrooms, a private elevator, individual terraces, and accessible roof decks. The proposal also includes civic open space, a private pool, paved sidewalks, on-street parallel parking spaces, an interior paved drive aisle, and landscaping. To give you a little history on the site, um, there are two parcels, 375 and 395. 
the 375 Northeast 6th Avenue parcel was originally developed with a car wash um, in 1959 that was demolished in January of 2006 and has remained vacant. And the 395 parcel contained an automobile repair shop, which was demolished in October of 2007 and has also remained vacant since. On March 1st, 2022, the City Commission granted two waivers for the project. The first waiver was related to the um, setback um, on, along Northeast 6th Avenue and Northeast 4th Street at the, at the, inner, at the corner um, to provide a 3.17 foot setback on the ground floor uh, and a zero foot setback on the second and third floor. And uh, the second waiver was related to the placement of the required civic open space in the mid portion of the site. Um, it, the code requires that it be bound by uh, building facades or streets and it was located um, adjacent to the interior drive aisle, which required the waiver. Pursuant to um, LDR figure 4413B1, which is a central core and beach sub-district regulating plan of the LDRs, Northeast 6th Avenue is considered a primary street and Northeast 4th Street is considered a secondary street. Um, pursuant to table 4413C, the proposal complies with the, dim the dimensional requirements of the, um, of the district, which is uh, shown here. It's also provided in your backup. In regards to, pro to parking, the proposal meets the requirements for parking. Each unit has a two-car garage, which accommodates 60 spaces. The required 13 guest spaces are provided as parallel spaces along the north and south alley on the east side of the site, two of which are equipped with um, uh, charging stations for fuel alternative vehicles. Additionally, there's on-street parallel parking um, provided within the Northeast 6th Avenue or Federal Highway right-of-way in compliance with city standards. And while bicycle parking is not required for attached single-family homes, the applicant has provided eight bicycle parking spaces. The, uh, the land development regulations require certain findings be made in regard to the architectural elevations. Um, that the and the findings are listed here for you. They're also provided in the staff report. In addition, there are additional um, findings related to the architectural elevations also provided in the staff report. Um, so within the CBD, uh, applicants are required to choose one of the seven approved architectural vernacular styles. Um, and this uh, project is proposing the masonry, masonry modern style. Masonry modern um, can incorporate flat roofs or um, the, the, uh, or based on the pure geometric form uh, frequently include f uh, rooftop terraces. They, the buildings uh, are designed to emphasize the solidity of the mass, the geometry of the building, um, smooth stucco exteriors, ratio of glass to wall emphasizes, also emphasizes the solidity of the structure. Window types are typically recessed, uh, rational load-bearing construction technique, limited ornamentation, railings or metal wood or extensions of solid walls, um, eyebrows, terraces, arcades, or deep roof, roof overhangs can be provided to provide shade, stone and wood detailing, and tripartite composition, which is the base, middle, and top. Um, so... The proposed buildings exhibit many of those characteristics that I just mentioned. The exterior is proposed as predominantly smooth stucco finish with panel detailing. The windows will have bronze frames. They are recessed and surrounded by precast stone material. The base of the buildings will be wrapped in precast stone and the buildings will incorporate a blue, beige, and uh, white color scheme for the upper floors. Bronze horizontal aluminum railings will accent the individual terraces and ground floor entries. Bronze horizontal guard rails will be mounted on the rooftop. Um, elevator tower overrun is proposed on top of the building, providing access to the rooftop terraces. Entry, do entry doors are proposed as wood with horizontal detailing, and the garage doors are designed with a composite overlay with a wood green finish. The proposal reflects the monolithic intent of the masonry modern ex architecture, which is clearly expressed in the building's exterior. The CBD also requires uh, a uh, frontage type, one of the uh, approved frontage types. The applicant is proposing the stoop 
frontage type, a stoop is a small staircase leading to the entrance of a building that may be covered. The elevation of the stoop is necessary to ensure privacy for residential uses in the ground story of buildings. Stoop should provide sufficient space for a person to comfortably pause before entering or after exiting the building. And the uh, chart on the screen shows that the proposal meets the requirement, the dimensional requirements for stoops in the CBD. Okay, uh, streetscapes. So uh, LDR section 4413E2A speaks to the requirements for streetscapes within the CBD, which includes a four foot curb zone, six foot pedestrian clear zone, and additional setback area. Applicant is proposing a distance of approximately 14.05 feet from the back of the curb to the buildings that face along Northeast 6th Avenue and 10 feet along Northeast 4th Street. Streetscape, streetscape standards along Northeast 4th Street have been modified to accommodate the existing site constraints. The portion of Northeast 4th Street along the subject property has existing underground utilities. Um, there's AT&T and sanitary sewer lines and right-of-way constraints. There are four lanes merging to two lanes. Due to the existing site constraints, the required streetscapes and curb zones are difficult to provide in the typical configuration to comply with the streetscape standards. Therefore, pursuant to LDR section 4413E2B4, the Development Services Director approved the modified streetscape as proposed. The proposal requires a total of 2,564 square feet of civic open space and 2,588 square feet uh, are provided central to the site adjacent to Northeast 6th Avenue. In accordance with the code requirement, the area includes trees and palms, a pet waste station, a drinking fountain, a pet drinking fountain, a trash receptacle, and seating. As previously mentioned, a waiver was granted by the City Commission for the location of the proposed civic open space. The landscape plans have been reviewed for compliance with LDR section 4616 by the senior landscape planner. The proposal also complies with uh, LDR section 4619, which is a tree preservation, protection enfor enforcement, and maintenance uh, requirements. And the chart shows uh, the uh, required in lieu fee that will be paid by the applicant as a result of the application. This application includes two additional waivers that uh, the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board can grant as part of this approval. The first is a waiver request seeking relief from Section 4616H3D to allow for a 1.22-foot uh, minimum width landscape strip or a 5-foot minimum landscape strip is required. And the second is a waiver request from Section 4616H34 to provide palms for the required interior landscaping rather than um, shade trees. Uh, in accordance with the code section seeking a relief from 25% of the required trees shall be palms um, and the request is proposing um, additional palms to make up for the lack of shade trees. In regards to waivers, the board, um, there are findings that need to be found, met um, in order to grant the waiver. That they shall not adversely affect, affect the neighboring area, shall not significantly diminish the provision of public facilities, shall not create an unsafe situation, and does not result in the grant of a special privilege in that the same waiver would be granted under similar circumstances on other properties. So the first waiver, which is uh, related to the landscape um, strip. The waiver is being sought due to the proposed six-foot backout space at the south end of the interior drive aisle. Code requires a five foot wide landscape strip between the property line and the edge of the six foot back out space. Pro site configuration does not allow for enough dimensional area for the required 11 feet needed to accommodate the six foot back out space and the five foot landscape strip. As a six foot wide back out space is necessary to facilitate vehicular manu maneuvering within the subject area, the narrowing of the landscape strip is being requested. If approved, the waiver is not anticipated to adversely affect the neighboring area and would create a safer situation as a six foot back out space would be able to be provided, which would benefit the traffic flow of the site and allow for enhanced vehicular and pedestrian safety. Public facilities will not be diminished and the applicant will not receive a special privilege as reduced landscape islands have been approved throughout the city when necessary to create safer situations such as this. The second waiver is being sought with regards to interior landscaping requirements, uh, which states that uh, there shall be a group of palms or shade tree for every 100, 125 square feet of required interior landscaping. 
um, due to the site constraints and the building interference, it is not possible to provide 75% um, the, of the required trees as shade trees. Um, if, the approved, if approved, the waiver is not anticipated to adversely affect the neighboring area nor create an unsafe situation. As the applicant is proposing trees that are permitted in other development scenarios throughout the city, public facilities will not be diminished as a result of the request and the applicant will be um, the applicant would be granted a special privilege as other developments are, are required to provide shade trees in this particular scenario. The buildings could have been proposed at a smaller scale, allowing for enough space to provide for the required shade trees. Um, shade trees are preferred to palms for providing a dense tree canopy. Section 3.1.1 of the LDRs uh, requires that the project meet the findings in regards to land use map, concurrency, consistency, and compliance with the LDRs and the project does meet all of those um, findings. Uh, there's more information provided in the backup. Uh, review by others. The utility providers were notified as uh, part of the site plan submission. Project was reviewed by the DDA on June 14th, 2021. Uh, the board voted 5-0 to approve the plan as submitted. Two, two of the members were not present. The, public, the project was reported to the CRA on July 15th, 2021. No comments were received. Uh, courtesy notices were provided to the Palm Trail Homeowners Association, and we did not receive any letters of objection or support in re uh, related to the project. There are technical notes that are required to be um, that are required to be completed prior to the issuance of a building. Well, some of them are prior to issuance of a building permit, some of them are related to um, other timing elements, but the applicant is aware of the technical notes that um, they'll need to follow up on after the meeting. And that completes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for, for that very thorough presentation. <laughs> is there any comment from the public? Step up to the podium, state your name and address, please. Hi, Joy Howell, um, 25 Northwest 24th Court. First, I just have a quick question. Mr. Bennett, I assume this is not coming before planning and zoning, correct? This project? No, it shouldn't. If, if there's anything associated with planning and zoning, it would have come prior to before SPRAB, so. Right. Okay, great. Just wanted to make my comments just as a property owner um, in the neighborhood. Hold on, Mr. Cavelli may be answering that question. We still have to do a plat. Oh. And the plat will go to planning and zoning. Okay, so I have another question then for Mr. Bennett. So can I make a comment about trees or not? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, technically, I, I don't think that that's an issue. I mean, yeah, because you're on the planning and zoning board, the real issue would be if there's multiple members and it'd be a sunshine violation. So, but we don't even need to worry about that. There's no other planning and zoning board members here. Okay. And you're also speaking, you know, as as a right. member of the public. So, no, there's no issues with you commenting on the project. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, well, just generally speaking, I we I I like the project. I think they've done a very nice job in the planning um, of the site and all of that. Um, but I just wanted to uh, mention to the to this board that the Palm Trail area and our neighborhood has been so focused on trying to get street trees and tree you know street beautification. So we really appreciate what they've done with the alley. That's a that's a big improvement. There's no question turning that into a streetscape. But my question relates really to the city, which is that they're removing trees on the site and paying into the in lieu tree fund. If they were willing to instead take some of that for the trees that might be uh, desirable for the neighborhood for transplantation, would the city be willing to work with the developer and work with the neighborhood on this to see if there's a way to do that? There are several mature oaks that look like they might possibly be viable. I, I saw the less than 50%, but they might be. And I'm just wondering if the city would be amenable to that because I believe Mr. Cavelli said that his client would be willing to work with the neighborhood. So that's my question, I guess. 
I don't know. I'm going to. Sure. While we wait for Michelle. For, from a procedural standpoint, let's just make sure that public comment is done okay. first. Can you address that? We'll yeah, can we, let's just to make sure that we're doing everything properly. We can deal with that dis question during the discussion. Right. Okay. So we'll have, uh, if there's any more public comment, we'll do that first. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. That's, that's really the sum of my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Jill Schifferly, speaking for the Palm Trail Homeowners Association. Um, Can you give the address, please, Jill? My address is 321 Palm Trail. Thank you. In Delray Beach. Um, I actually have spoken to the planner to get the um, contact information for Mr. Cavelli, and um, the board has attempted to reach out to um, the developer as well. And I was glad to hear this evening Mr. Cavelli saying we'd be happy to work with you on some of the issues. Um, as far as how this project impacts a neighborhood, I agree it's an attractive project. And right now, the lot, other than the beautiful big shade trees that are on it, um, is being used as a parking lot for Durotran. And it's been vacant for 10 years, I guess. So I think this could be a really positive uh, project for the neighborhood. And I think the uh, streetscape along Federal is, is beautiful and looks really good. Um, the, the biggest concern the neighborhood has is Northeast 4th Street. And I agree the alley is, is done well as well. But Northeast 4th Street, as, as one who walks that intersection multiple times a day, and, and many neighbors, many people come from other neighborhoods, that is a very heavily um, trafficked intersection in terms of cars, in terms of pedestrians, and in terms of bicycles. Um, you've got Bedners on one side, Publix on the other side. You've got, uh, and I'm not saying right on that intersection, but very close to it. So I think the pedestrian experience is, is very key. And I know there are going to be sidewalks where there are no sidewalks now, so that's, that's a benefit. But um, the, the traffic is another thing. But let's stick to the Northeast 4th Street. It's a key entrance to our neighborhood. There are only a couple of entrances into the Palm Trail neighborhood. One is Northeast 2nd Street, which has similar types of large townhome properties on it. They're very well landscaped along 2nd Street. And my concern, I guess, in, in a nutshell, with the 4th Street uh, streetscape is there, there aren't a lot of shade trees. There aren't any street trees. There are some trees, but there, we're taking um, huge shade trees and we are putting up uh, three and four, I, I guess it's three stories, anyway, large facades of buildings. And we have some trees, but they're not, um, they're not shady street trees. So we're kind of losing that. And I think that is an impact on the neighborhood. One other thing across the street, across 4th Street on the north side, Durotrans, uh, what we've heard is it's been sold. And that, again, could be a, a real positive for the neighborhood as far as cleaning up that uh, corner. And we're hoping that there could be some coordination between whoever does that and whatever they build there and the uh, this project and doing some traffic calming slash street trees uh, with with some good landscaping to soften that entrance because that that road as everyone knows goes all the way out it becomes Lake Ida and it's it's a major east-west intersection and where it crosses federal uh, is just a major intersection for the city going right into our neighborhood so thank you very much those are my comments thank you thank you Well, let's go to rebuttal, and then we can deal with the questions. Do you have any rebuttal? I do Mr. not. Um, I, I wouldn't call it rebuttal, but I would like to just clarify a few things, if I could. By all means. Um, Fourth Street is a real challenge. 
because there are some very large utilities in 4th Street, which is why we had to flip the sidewalk with the, the landscape area. Because if you stayed with the normal streetscape, it's impossible to plant anything. So this was a compromise as a way of getting at least trees of some type along that facade. Um, and so this is the best we can do given what's under the ground. Um, the other thing that we are doing is, is we are going to put street lights on that street. So, so in terms of a night experience, that will help in terms of lighting that, that, that part of it. Um, we recognize the fact that, that, you know, the pedestrian experience is very important to the city and we've really tried to come up with a streetscape, not only on Federal Highway and, and forth, but on the alley as well, which, you know, alleys need a lot of work in this town and they're, they're, they're places that congregate, they're places that dump, they're at night, they're, they're just not good. This brings light, brings people, it brings eyes on the street, it brings all of those natural surveillance things that SEPTED talks about in terms of doing that alley. So um, with regards to the trees, um, you know, we have a requirement that, that we have to deal with them one way or another. If there's a, an ability to take some of those trees and move them to some location nearby within the Palm Trail area, then that, that's just taking from this side and putting it to this side. So it's, it's really just a part of the equation. And so we're happy to sit and, and, and work through that. Um, I, I think the trick is going to be is, is to, 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 to name the sites for where those trees go. Um, but we're certainly happy to, to meet and, and do that. Thank you. So I have rebuttal to that and more information for the okay. board. Um, and not that that's truly rebuttal, but addressing this. So the landscape architect for the project is here, Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think some questions could be posed of him. He would need to be sworn in. He hasn't been sworn in because there would need to be some discussion here with an arborist report, condition rating, um, different things like that that would need to be talked through. It, it is, the proposal is to remove trees and to pay into the tree trust fund. Right. So that's their proposal and I think you should ask them about that. Um, but that's certainly if the applicant's willing to make some uh, concessions or adjustments to the plan, whatever it might be to a landscape plan, um, that's to be discussed with them. But I want to remind you, and I wish I had um, previously, I put the landscape findings on the screen. They're in the staff report too. The analysis of the project is based on this section of the code. So we have landscape architecture and site plan findings that the board has to make a decision that at the time of action on a landscape plan, the approving body shall make a finding with respect to the plan's relationship to the following. And that is 4616, which is the landscape code um, regarding the objectives, the standards, the landscape design. So it has been deemed by staff to be sufficient with respect to that code section. This is a design matter, and I think that you should engage um, Mr. Cavelli and Mr. Jacobson in a further conversation. Chair, if I can piggyback off of that, well, maybe we let the landscape architect make his way to the podium. Um, you know, this board has run into this issue before. There's a difference between not being compliant with the code and thinking that the code is deficient in what it requires. Right. Right. So just keep that in mind as we ask questions and have the discussion. Is sometimes the issue is that we don't, the board does not, the board wishes the code required more than it does. Mm -hmm. And the code does give them this avenue that if they can establish certain parameters that the trees are removable and that they have the right underneath the land development regulations to pay instead of, instead of or making that request instead of providing the replacements and et cetera. So I know we, we have that, this board has that debate, I think. Um, yeah. I'll, we'll classify it maybe as often, but just a reminder that we're tasked with looking at the current code as it is, even if we find the code to not live up to the standards we wish it did. I, I, I understand. 
Does anyone have questions of the, uh, the landscape architect? Well, why don't we, Rochelle, why don't we go ahead and have him sworn in just in case, um, since we <clears throat> have him. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just start off real quick. Um, you know, I think I think the applicant has admitted has got a willingness to to talk with the, with the neighborhoods, and if if they determine the trees are salvageable and can be moved and can find a site for them and can move them, um, that's that's fine. My other my other thought is, the applicant is paying either uh, one hundred twenty six or one hundred or ninety two thousand dollars into the uh, the tree fund. The tree fund is for beautifying our town, I suppose, right? Isn't that what the tree fund's for? Yes. So then, maybe the, maybe the, uh, the, uh, the 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 directors of the tree fund, maybe the uh, your your neighborhood should appeal to them and say we want some of that money to beautify our neighborhood. Um, I think there's something like five or six hundred thousand dollars in there now. Um, I mean, it, it grows. I mean, this is this is one application, and it's you know it's a hundred thousand dollars, and I think. I, I, last time I checked, there was like six or seven hundred thousand dollars in there now. But if the applicant is willing to work with it, I don't think I would. I would recommend a a private private city or organization. If these two private ended, I'd recommend a private private organization and get get you you with it with the neighborhood. Um, if you're willing to discuss in good faith what trees might be saved, where, where they could go, the neighborhood could identify where they might go. Well, and, and that's. Probably shouldn't have that discussion just so it doesn't appear as if the city is making that a condition or that it has any influence on I'm this not, application. Yeah, I'm not making that a condition. I'm just right. suggesting I, I don't want the city to get involved because I think that, that would be a condition. So I think the comments you've provided are sufficient to allow the applicant to decide whether or not to work with a third party. Um, May I ask it for a point of clarification? Sure. What I heard Michelle say is that if I decide to move one tree off the site, my plans have changed and this board needs to re-review it. As opposed to destroy a tree? As opposed to demolish a tree? As opposed to following the plan as it is currently. Right, I was just going to say, I don't necessarily agree with that. I would still want the, for our senior landscape planner to determine that whatever they came up with is still in compliance. They're, they're just talking about removing a tree that's slated for demolition and relocating it to a third-party site, if my understanding. Correct. So the question would just become, does the plan need to be amended to reflect that it's being relocated off-site rather than being demolished? So it's not exactly what I said, but I understand where you were going. Um, if the plan shifts, the, the code says, and our director's here and we talked about this, the code says you save, relocate, or you right. pay into the tree trust fund. And that's what they're doing. If they, if the option is to save additional trees and try to relocate them, the plan would shift. But the board can no. say that in their motion that allows for some of the trees to be moved. I encourage you to get the landscape architect up and speak with him about the ability to do just that. Okay. Be, I, I really need to push this clarification. I'm sorry. The plan does not change. What we're, what we're agreeing to do is instead of cutting a tree down, we would move it. It doesn't affect the landscape plan in any way. That would be my, my opinion. Where would, the, would, my where opinion. would it move, though? It's, what, I mean, the only thing to, you to should get is your money back. In Palm Trail would designate. Yeah, I don't, I don't think but they're it, talking about finding a suitable relocation on site. No, I know. No, so it doesn't change our plan in any way. It's still being removed. It's still being, it's still being removed. removed. The only difference is instead of cutting it down, it's being moved off site. And then we have to adjust the plan where it says what trees are being relocated in the tree disposition plan, right? You have a chart that would change. Mm -hmm. Can, and that can can't be handled. Can that can't that be, handled be handled administratively. Yes. That could be handled administratively. Yes, I. I so it did, doesn't have to come back before us. I did think I. I thought I heard you say moving it around on site, no. but no. if it's moving off site, it's still a relocation. Yeah. And a lay person who knows nothing about trees weigh in. So, 
My only concern is, and my question for clarification is, if they decide to relocate it, there is a cost burden for doing that. So we're not asking them to pay in lieu and relocate. That would be my only concern. It's either or. Because we're not here to have a cost burden on the applicant. Right. It's either or. If they, okay. if they cut it down, it's they pay. a trust fund. If they relocate it, they would have to modify that dollar amount. Right. So they would have to weigh the, the cost. Yes you know, what's in their best interest from a cost standpoint. And the cost, but also the viability of the tree to be moved. So that's mm -hmm. a condition rating. That's something I briefly spoke with the, the landscape architect about before I came up. They would have to do an arborist report and update that to make sure it reflected a tree being moved. Mm -hmm. Well, then let's ask a quick question. There, there's another option. Part. The other option is since those trees are going to be destroyed, we could just plant a new tree in Palm Trail that is a healthy, viable tree and get credit for towards the in lieu fee. Uh, if we're going to discuss that, I would not. <laughs> that, that needs to come back to the board. I'm, I'm not even sure if that's permissible in the land development yeah, regulations. Okay. So. so I'm a little nervous about a lot of stuff coming back to the board with one board meeting a month. No, that we I agree. Have. Yeah. I agree. No, so I, let's, let's, let's ask the landscape architect if he thinks that, that there are any of the um, live oak trees that are viable for transfer around the block. Hi, Mark Jacobson, landscape architect, uh, 2300 Northwest 40, I'm sorry, 2300 Corporate Boulevard, Suite 214, Boca Raton. There are several trees on site. Most of them are mahoganies, which have nuts and fall on things, which aren't desirable. There are several oaks. Most of the oaks are less than 50%. I think there's one that's rated at 50%. I have no issue with going back to our arborist, uh, Jeremy Chancey, who's uh, been hired to write the arborist report and ask him what the viability is. What I really don't want to do is relocate a tree that doesn't have much of a chance to survive. Mm -hmm. If it has a great chance to survive, I think we're happy to discuss it. I don't think that's an issue. Um, but I don't want to put another, you know, a problem tree on somebody else's property just because it happens to be large. They've been neglected and not maintained and irrigated for I don't know how many years. So they aren't, yeah, they aren't in the best shape, frankly. I mean, I actually made the suggestion to Mike, <laughs> can't we just plant new trees in those locations and we know they'll survive? But I understand the implication yeah, of that. I don't want so. to, that's another burden on staff. Right. Well, that is what the tree trust fund is for. Right. What we're talking about. You made a really great point that the neighborhood could approach the city and ask for trees in their neighborhood, which I think they are working on that or have said that they're doing that. We have done but I, I would, you know, suggest as William has guided the board, um, that there's a certain level of administrative level that we can handle if the board says it's okay. I don't know that. Yeah. that we need to continue for that. Yeah. And staff has already confirmed that if they're able to reach an agreement with a third party for relocation, that's an administrative change. So wouldn't have to come back here just merely to change it from yeah, demolition removal to relocation. So, Okay, well, let's, let's move on. Thank you very much. One, one last thing. That slide that we showed on Forest Street showed some palm trees. I'm not sure that they accurately represented what we're actually proposing. We've got, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, it was. It was the city slide that didn't, this one got updated. We are showing some canopy trees, albeit medium size on that street. Thank you. Thank you. What kind of trees are those? They're actually, there's three pigeon plums and one live oak, but the live oak's all the way to the east end where we have a little bit larger space. A lot space of shade, for, right? Because yeah. that's the north side, right? Yeah. The north side of the building as well. Thank you very much. Let's uh, move on to discussion of the uh, application before us. Annette, you want to start? I'm actually good with it. That was quick. <laughs> it was a lively discussion. <laughs> Is that it? Carol? All right, I'm good with it also. I um, appreciate um, staff's report and your thorough um, report, Mike, and, and Mark, I think the uh, plans are uh, very detailed. The building elevations are, I think,
think it's lovely. It's going to be a nice addition to that area. Um, as far as, I mean, I was, when I looked at 4th Street, I was wondering the same thing. Why aren't there more trees there? But as um, staff explained, there's uh, utilities there, which is an uh, imposition for, for everybody. Um, you do have the, the pigeon plums, and you have planted the oak, and, and there's also an oak around the corner, too, from the other oak. So that, um, that will fill in and get some shade in that area. Uh, I don't have any issue with the uh, waiver for the palms. That's a normal thing, and there's a lot of situations in Delray where we have the exact same thing, Atlantic Grove, and then I'm sure all those, uh, you know, Cannery, Cannery Road probably has the exact same thing. It's just, uh, and it looks fine. I don't have any problem with it. I am, um, and then the terminus with the uh, wall and the, back out space. I don't have an issue with that either. I'm actually surprised you have to put a landscape strip there because it's supposed to, like you have to have a zero, it's a zero lot line, right? So I, I'm puzzled as to even why you had to put that in, but, um, and uh, yeah, your 3D uh, renderings were very helpful to all of us to, to see what was going on and really appreciate that. And was there another waiver? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so we're looking at the two waivers and just general comments about the project. Is that? Well, I would replace general comments with you know compliance with the land development yeah, regulations. Okay. But yes. I mean. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have any problem with the waivers. Uh, let's see. So the so those architectural renderings are. Ac very accurate, or yes. are they just sort of aspirational? So no, no we, we tried to duplicate okay. materials, the colors, to the elevations of the building as closely as we could. Okay. The uh, the shade trees in the common area, what what uh, are they? Uh, what kind of shade trees would you put in there? I prefer to. It doesn't look like a very large area. All those so we do have a variety of I brought an 11 by 17 we'll see how good my site is <laughs> all right so we've got actually a group of four oak trees that's sort of the central core okay and they're in the middle so that they have the most room to grow and then along the perimeter our entry drive we've got um, six um, calophyllum uh, we've got a group of coconuts at the entry, you know, to give us some variety between palms and trees. And then on the back side of the, of the uh, civic site, we've got five calophyllums as well. Choosing those because they're a little more manageable and spread than the, what are than they the oak trees. It's called a calophyllum tree. It's a Brazilian beauty leaf. Okay. Nice canopy tree. And then, um, of course, uh, out on the street, we have oak trees as well. So we've got a pretty dense area of landscaping okay. with, with foliage in that area, actually. Okay. All right. In, in the alleyway, that, that's, that's good. So the alleyway, is that a two-way alleyway or is it a one-way? Two-way. It, it's a two-way, and, and I think the I, I think our, our illustrations didn't accurately show the alleyway in terms of landscape material. We've actually created landscape nodes at the very southern end with an oak tree, the very northern end with an oak tree, and then in the center where we have our pool area, we have two oak trees. So we've tried to introduce canopy trees. Originally we had palms, but it was asked by us, right. uh, by Jayun, to uh, add canopy trees, so we did. We didn't show those items. Oh, okay. So... But the garages are in the, uh, the, the center drive. They're internal to the site, yes. Okay. Do you think people are going to use the alleyway to get out to 4th Street, or how do you think they're... You mean, oh... I mean... Driving, yeah. if you're leaving the site? Yeah. Well, I would venture to say if somebody was going to come out and go north, they would obviously go out to Federal Highway or 6th Street and go north. Maybe if they were going... Uh, 
in a different direction, they might come out the alleyway and go down 4th Street. Okay. They have that ability to do that, I mean, and go west on 4th Street. Okay. And that was added as a fire, I believe. A, both done so right. for both. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Just a couple quick questions, Mr. Cavalli. In your, your rendering, you show uh, foliage of some sort. I think it's a shrub or something of, of trees on the uh, third floor patios. Is that part of your landscape plan? Yes, it is. So that's so they'll, they'll be green because I like green space up, up yep. high like yes, that. Yes, it is. One of the renderings, um, it, it shows what looks like permanent ladders le leading up to the, uh, the elevator overshoot and the, and the roof equipment and stuff. Those are, those are locked ladders that have to be there in order to service the roof for whatever, you know, the air conditioning, whatever is up. I understand. There. I understand they need access to service yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Those are not for people to go up there. But if I lived there, I'd want to go up there. <laughs> On the third level, there's the, 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 the fourth floor steps back. Right. Like 20 feet, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 feet. So you have this very large terrace on the third floor. With greenery, right? With the greenery, so that would be your outdoor space on the upper level. Okay, but I bet you people go up there anyway, but <laughs> as long as you don't, have, you don't have any hot tubs or anything up there, yeah. you got the elevator yeah. overshoot yeah. and you got the uh, air conditioning equipment, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, um, I guess this is a question for Ms. Issa. The, um, there's, there's no low income requirements for for a structure of this size right no. low income housing no okay and um and they didn't even go to the i understand that they could have had uh, uh plans with even more more density than 30 units per this property is that true i'd have to do the calculations yeah. okay. but um i mean it looks pretty looks pretty maxed out but i can tell you this we started out with 34 units and over the last two years we lost four Lost four. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I think, you know, as a guy who grew up in a town called Highland Park, um, <laughs> I think this is a great improvement from um, what uh, that, that vacant, I, the only thing I've, I've seen on there are some, you know, uh, mishandled shopping carts and stuff. Uh, um, but I, I, I would encourage you to work with, with the neighborhood group as, as a gesture of goodwill because they're going to be going through their um, daily and uh, and then we'll um, and hopefully hopefully we can rescue a couple of trees and cut down on the amount of your um, in lieu payment conversely the neighborhood should uh, seek out in lieu addition improvements that they're um, from the city now yep. uh, any, any more comments are we ready for a motion I have one more comment and um, I'm putting on my Dana hat who's not here today but I just want to say a nice color palette also <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That's good. That's it. Okay. We don't need to. We don't need to vote on the the. Uh, uh, the no. Board. If if um if you have either the motion up from the report or if Elizabeth has the slide, it should incorporate. Right, and we don't need to read all the technical notes, correct? No. Good. Okay, I'm uh, open for a motion. I'll, I'll move do it. it. I'll, I'll move approval of the class 5 2020 157 site plan landscape plan architectural elevations and waivers for the highland park townhomes project located at 375 and 395 northeast 6th avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations second Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Todd LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Rex Patton? Yes. Thank you. Very good luck. Is that it? That's it. Okay, that moves us. Last one. Is there one? moves us to our last item, which I think is 9E or F, 80 or F, 8F. Um, entered that into the record. I'm going to read the 
Yes, uh, again, for the record, Elizabeth East is a senior planner development services department entering into the record city case file number 2021-223, which is pop stroke uh, class five site plan application. You look familiar. Mike Cavelli, Cavelli Design, 1209 South Swinton Avenue. Uh, hopefully this is a little simpler. <laughs> um, this is a project that also has been going around for almost two years. Um, this is located between Dixie Highway and Federal Highway, just north of the Chocolate Factory and south of the Dollar General, just south of Northeast 14th Street. Um, we started out with this project by going to the commission for a conditional use waiver that was for uh, a miniature golf course for the south part of the project that was approved in April 20th, 2021. As a part of that hearing, the people on the west side of the railroad tracks uh, had concerns about um, light from the, the area of, you know, infiltrating. So we came back with a plan that, as you can see, is quite a thick buffer. Um, and, and part of that uh, included a two foot berm so that we get more elevation with the hedge and uh, fencing that goes around the site um, in terms of providing that additional buffering. Part of the issue is, though, when you put a fence on top of a berm, the code says you have to measure the fence from natural grade, and so the fence would have only been able to be four feet tall. So we went and got a waiver that was approved by commission um, to measure, measure the fence from the top of the berm so that the overall height of the buffer is eight feet, and, and that was approved by commission. Um, with regards to the, the site plan, it's a fairly simple site plan in terms of there's three elements in the plan, a parking lot to the north, the, the putting course to the south, and the restaurant in the middle. Um, the, the site is 3.01 acres. Uh, after right-of-way dedication, we have to give 10 feet of right-of-way on Federal Highway. It's 2.86 acres. There's going to be a 4,628 foot square foot restaurant, two 18 hole Tiger Woods signature putting courses, um, a practice putting green, two fire pits with seating areas, an open play area with cornhole boards, children's play area with a slide uh, structure, um, points of service for golf, a service area that includes a dumpster enclosure, maintenance building and a loading zone. Um, we have 123 parking spaces required. We're providing 129, so we're in excess on parking. And we're actually providing six bicycle parking spaces. Um, with regards to, to landscaping, um, there's really four areas for landscaping on this. Um, the Dixie Highway buffer, which is on top of the berm, um, is, a, is a very dense buffer. It has a continuous coca plum hedge uh, in front of, of the fence. Um, the fence is really for security. The, the hedge is really for, for vision uh, blocking on top of the berm. Um, and there's a mix of trees that give various heights so that not only is the buffer the six foot of, of the fence and the hedge, but the trees above it. So it's a mix of green buttonwoods, live oaks, pitch apples, purple and yellow tababuya and, and coconut palms. So that would be the, the buffer on um, Dixie Highway. Part of the discussion with the conditional use was that, that there are um, electronic scoreboards associated with the golf. And there's three of them, one on the, about midway in the, on, on the Dixie Highway frontage, about one midway on Federal Highway and one at the south end. The, the condition of, of the conditional use was that we could not have the scoreboards be above the fence. So, and, and the concern was that there would be distractions for, from, since this is surrounded on three sides by roads, with drivers. So, so the requirement for the, the, the very heavy buffer all the way around is, is, is in answer to that there would be no distraction and drivers could not see those uh, electronic scoreboards. On the federal side, highway side, um, 
there, there is a 10 foot special <laughs> landscape buffer by code, um, which, which we have, um, but that also is uh, one of the F, FPNL right tree, right place situations because there's large power lines running down Federal Highway. So the trees in that area are, are have to be like the trees that are in the approved FPNL package, which would be silver buttonwood, the hoon holly, pitch apple, purple and yellow tabubuias, and cabbage palms. And then of course there's shrubs that are coca plum hedge with um, um, Factahatchee grass and bromeliads and some green island ficus to, to give some layering to that buffer. In the Gulf area, um, the, the landscaping is, is a little different than, than a standard because of the, the way the holes are lined out. Um, it's, it's a lot, of, lot more palms, but there are ligustrums and um, um, I think silver buttonwoods in there. So, so it, it gives a nice, still a nice mix, but um, it, it's, it's a maintenance thing in terms of not doing any really big large shade trees in there. Um, and then the parking areas where the large trees are um, to provide shade for the cars and the patrons, it's got live oaks, green buttonwoods, crepe myrtle, and cabbage palms. And then the landscape islands have cocoa plum, Florida privet, jasmine, and green island ficus, and some, uh, some, some natural grasses, um, so that, that each area kind of has its own little design in terms of, of the landscaping. As far as the, the, the building itself, um, there's a lot going on around the building. If you look at the bottom of the screen, um, the, the yellow part of the building sticking out, that is like the golf check-in place. That, that is a point of service for, for golf, and it also has re restrooms in there. To the left of that is a practice putting green. And as you go up to the olive area, that is a open play area that has cornhole in it, uh, cornhole boards in it, and at the top end and the bottom end of that, there is a U-shaped seating area that actually has fire pits. The area at the very top that is um, a child's play area that is a secured, fenced, pl uh, safe child's play area. There's climbing structures in there with um, a, a slides that are for, to, for uh, the younger kids to use. So this is really a family-oriented project that has something for everybody. On the upper right-hand part of it, there is a dumpster enclosure, a maintenance building, and a loading area. The sidewalk goes into the back of the building, which is where the kitchen is. So we've situated that so that there's no conflict with patrons uh, in terms of you know taking things to the dumpster or, or, or anything like that. And then um, the back side of the building facing the parking lot does have a large canopy that, that provides seating for people to wait in terms of getting into the golf or into the restaurant. And pretty much that is the building. This is a, an image as an example of, of an existing facility of the play area. Um, the difference between this project and this photograph is those large dark couches would not be there. It would just be the, the railing that separates the play area from the, the golf area. But the fire pits would be at the left side of the screen and at the right side of the screen uh, with the seating areas on this plan. But this just gives you an idea of how that, what that play area looks like. And it also gives you an idea of the, the putting course and how it interacts with that play area. Um, and here's just another, another image of an existing facility to just give you an idea of what the putting areas look like. Um, building elevations, um, it's, it's a very low profile masonry modern uh, building. Um, it, it has very clean horizontal lines. The, um, in the middle you see the, the glass. Those are like two part panels that actually fold up so that the whole side can be open air. Um, and those panels, it, it basically is like if I can explain it, like two pieces that fold flat and it, it creates an awning above. So it, it isn't like a roll-up door or a garage door or anything like that. Um, difficult to tell what's going on with an elevation like this. 
So we've tried to give you a 3D to, to give you a little better idea of what the, the, the building would actually look like. This would be the north side on the parking lot side. Um, and um, the landscape is, is fairly accurate other than the render. It got a little crazy with the coloring on the uh, shrubbery. So um, this would be the east side of the building. This is pretty well covered from the buffering on Federal Highway, so you really won't see a whole lot of this. Um, this is the south side of the building, and again, you see all those glass areas that can be opened up. Um, and again, very difficult to interpret what's going on here, so we, we've tried to give you a 3D that, that gives you a little better idea. The colors are a little bit muted on this, um, but, but you get the, a feel for what the building architecture looks like it's in, in, in terms of the back side of the building that, that would be facing the, um, the golf area. And then this would be the east side, or I'm sorry, the west side. And again, this is behind the buffer on, on uh, Dixie Highway. This is where the kitchen is, so there can't be any windows or anything in that side of the building. Um, and then just for some clarity, uh, I, I said earlier that the colors were muted on the, on the building. This is an actual photograph of one of the facilities, so you can get an idea of the, the coloration and the, and the materials and the style that's actually used. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, before Mrs. Before Mrs. I forgot about ex parte again. <laughs> any ex parte? Nope. Okay. No, none. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, oh, I did it again. Thank you again for the record, Elizabeth Issa, Senior Planner, Development Services Department, presenting the Pop Stroke Class 5 Site Plan application this evening. Subject set, the subject 3.01 acre parcel is generally located between Old Dixie Boulevard and North Federal Highway, east of Northeast 14th Street, and is zoned general commercial with a compatible land use map designation of general commercial. Um, the subject site's address uh, it's comprised of five parcels um, we're going through the process of a plat application at which will create one parcel but at the moment there are five parcels one address is 1314 north federal highway the other four parcels do not have addresses they have associated parcel control numbers which are listed on the screen Class 5 site plan application um, is for a 4,628 square foot restaurant, two 18 hole miniature golf courses, a children's play area, two point of service kiosks, and a storage restroom building with associated landscaping, parking, and loading area. To give you a little background on the site, the subject properties, which are currently vacant, um, uh, were previously developed uh, with a gasoline station. Uh, permits to remove the four underground storage tank were issued in 1993, and on March 12, 2019, a temporary use permit for a parking for a temporary parking lot was approved for a period of two years. Um, on April 20, 2021, the applicant received conditional use approval for the miniature golf course and recreational establishment. On March 11, 2021, the Development Services Management Group approved a request associated with the Class 5 site plan application to reduce the dedication requirement for Old Dixie Highway from 20 feet to 0 feet, thereby eliminating a right-of-way dedication and maintaining the cur current dimension of 30 feet. Finally, on January 11, 2022, the City Commission approved a waiver request to allow the installation of a 6-foot tall fence on top of a 2-foot high berm surrounding the property. This may, I should note that the staff report um, incorrectly states that, and actually my slide also still says medium density residential. Um, it's supposed to be general commercial underneath zoning in the first chart. Um, and that is also incorrect in the staff report. It says RM. Um, but the this matrix compares the project design to the minimum and maximum development standards for the GC zoning district, which are set forth in LER section 434K and the project complies with all the minimum standards for development. In regards to parking, the restaurant, fire pits, and game deck require 68 parking spaces, which is 12 spaces for every 1,000 square feet of, um, of the 4,942 square feet proposed. 
The game deck, the game deck area is parked at the general commercial rate of four and a half parking spaces for every thousand square feet, which requires nine spaces. The miniature golf courses require one point five, one and a half parking spaces for every golf hole, and as there are thirty six holes proposed, fifty four spaces are required. There are six surplus parking spaces. This is this is the wrong chart. Okay, My, what I'm saying is correct. Yeah. Um, I apologize, this is the wrong chart. Um, but they are proposing six uh, surplus parking spaces above what is required. Um, the LDRs require that certain findings be made in regard to the architectural elevations. These findings are listed on the screen and were also provided to you in your backup. There are two sets of findings that need to be met. The proposed architecture for the structures is masonry modern. Both buildings will have a masonry exterior with a white painted scored stucco panel appearance, decorative metal louvers, and gray painted steel framing and gray painted steel framing and canopies. Decorative male louvers are proposed at the top of each building, providing additional architectural detailing. The restaurant building includes Claire Story windows and glass overhead garage doors on the north and south elevations, which are situated in front of bar seating areas. The overhead doors can be rolled open to provide an airy dining experience and connects to the adjacent game deck and golf areas beyond. The applicant has indicated that interior lighting has been designed to illuminate the interior of the building without causing a garish glare from the Claire Story windows. Uh, the, proposed design, the proposed design and scale are uniform throughout the site and internally complements the proposed use aesthetically, thus meeting the intent of LDR section 4618. Um, here are some of the elevations, which were also provided in the applicant's presentation. Um, the landscape plan pursuant to section 4616 C1A prior to the issuance of a building permit. Um, the, compli the compliance with the requirements of 4616 shall be assured through the review and approval of a landscape plan. The project is in compliance with section 4616 and 4619 and provides the following a uh, 10 foot special landscape setback along the property line that fronts North, North Federal Highway, a five foot perimeter landscape barrier along the west and south property line, um, 39 trees to comply with the required interior landscaping, and um, and 14 trees are being removed and mitigated, and 16 palms are being relocated on site. The landscape plan findings are listed here for you. They are also provided in the backup. And as well, we have site plan findings um, that are required to be made before a project is approved. And we also have the required findings of LDR section 311, which requires that all projects uh, comply in terms of land use map, concurrency, consistency, and compliance with the LDRs. And this project does meet all four requirements. There are appendixes uh, detailing those requirements in the staff report. Uh, utility providers were notified of the site plan submission. No comments of, object, of, of objection were provided. Um, the project is going to be reported to the CRA uh, this month. Um, Courtesy notices were sent to the local homeowners associations and we did not receive any letters of objection or support in regard to this project. Uh, there are technical notes associated with the project that will need to be completed prior to um, whatever timing they are associated with um, in the notes and the applicant is aware of the, these requirements and that completes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Any rebuttal? I have none. The chair, technically, we do need to ask for public, public comment. Oh, public. Oh. Recognizing the fact that there is no public here, but yeah, we should do it nonetheless. Okay, is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this? Okay, seeing none, we go into rebuttal. <laughs> Thank you, chair. <laughs> no rebuttal. None for me. Thank you. Then we're going to, uh, Elizabeth, before you start board assessing, could you um, uh, list the um, the conditions imposed by the uh, Planning and Zoning Board so we don't get hung up in those. Do we have them? I... I 
don't think that I do, but I could find them for you. I just oh, Mr. Could. Cavalli, do you, do you know the conditions? Um, I don't have them all, but we have complied with all of those conditions in the site plan, and, and it, were, it was things like the berm. Uh, right, berm, the, the lighting was I a think concern. The lighting was restricted to a 16-foot pole with Location down lighting. Down lighting. Um, the uh, scoreboard. I think there's some scoreboards were not allowed the scoreboard. above the fence. Um, there were there was those kind those kinds of comments that, that and none of the scoreboards face into the neighboring no. um, commercial. Everything or is below the fence and behind the buffers. Okay, good. I just wanted to yep. so we didn't have to go talking about that stuff. Okay, it's open for board discussion. I'll start. Uh, well, this is exciting. <laughs> yes, it is. I feel sorry for the golf place down the street. Um, hopefully, they will still track business in a different it does, way. It doesn't matter to putting around. They'll, they they they'll actually quit. supported this at one of the public hearings for the conditional use. Oh, yeah, they're okay. going to they're, they're gonna sell out. All right, so is this real grass or is it artificial turf? This is, uh, yes. <laughs> both? Um, it's a little bit of both, but it's mostly artificial turf. Okay, and then... Uh, so you've got your fence going around, mm -hmm. and a what small leaf clusia hedge? Um, I think it's cocoa plum. CG. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You've got two different size hedges. There's uh, along Dixie. There's a larger uh, circle, and then coming around Federal Highway, there's a smaller one. So I'm just I was just wondering what the difference was in those hedges. They, I, I'm not so sure that the hedges are any different because the hedges are, are six feet all the way around mm -hmm. because there's a six-foot fence all the way around and the hedge is in front of the fence. Um, I think the difference on, on uh, Federal Highway is, is it's a required uh, landscape buffer, so we have standards. We have to meet with that, and because of the FPNL right tree right place the plant material is has changed somewhat but the fence and the and the uh the hedge goes all the way around and the hedge is going to be how high six feet local plum i, I think it is i, I don't know it's I, I need to i don't have the landscape plans with me i'm sorry okay um yeah i really don't have any issues with it i think it's a really fun project and um uh, that's exciting for delray I don't have anything. You have great ice cream, too. Okay. <laughs> Take your word for it. I'll, I'll be there. You may need more bike racks. No one's going to be there. Small leaf clusia. Is it? Mm hmm Okay. She's saying CG, so that's... Okay. Better. Anyone else? No comments. Uh, are pe do people rent clubs? Or they bring their own. Everything is provided at the, the check-in station, it, and it's just, just a putter. Part. That's all it is. They're, uh, uh, is this is this a, uh, a franchise, Obstro? Um, like a I'm not sure if it's a franchise, but they've opened one in Port St. Lucie, and they've opened one in Fort Myers already. They have one going on in Orlando, and this one in Delray, which for being at the north side of town, I think, is exciting to get people up there. And it's, um, they have ages, they have like a, other states also. This is kind of an all ages project. It's it's really family oriented. There's something for every age, um, you know, to, to go there. And the, the the nice thing about the way it's designed, you have the play area that mom and dad could be sitting in the restaurant and watching the kids play cornhole. So it's really designed for that kind of interaction. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, we'll be babysitting the cats. People hit the balls far, or are they just don't? It's just a putter. That's it. <laughs> that's why we put this big, this big buffer all around. <laughs> no, it's it's just the putter. That's all they get. Okay. All right. Well, I I, I don't have any. I don't. I'm, I'm good. No no further questions. No, I think it's I think it's good for the city. I just have a, a, a groupie uh, request. Is Tiger Woods going to be here for the ribbon cutting? We hope. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. Now, I, I mean, think I think the conditions imposed by uh, uh, I'm glad they're acceptable by by the PNZ, um, and, and that we don't have to go go through all that because 
could actually tell you that we had the plat up on Monday night. Yeah, right. And the, all those conditions were reiterated at the meeting, and, and so those are were there, right? on okay, the plat. So, you, so. Oh, so they, you can attach conditions to the plat? No, no. No, they just wanted to make sure that all those conditions were complied yeah, the, with the in, plat in was, discussion for the plat. Yeah, the plat was the board item. They just I knew that's required because um, uh, they were informed that the site plan was going before you tonight. So they did ask staff to confirm that all the conditions they had placed have been incorporated into the site plan. And at that meeting, staff confirmed that as well. Okay, good, good. Yep. Okay, now do we have a motion? Where are we? Am I on the right one? It's 2021-223. 20, mm -hmm. If you can read it, it's on the, it's on the screen. Oh, no, if, if you can read through all the... Um, move for approval of the Class 5 2021-223 site plan landscape and architectural elevations for the Pop Stroke project located at 1314 North Federal Highway by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer is absent. Bob LaRue is absent. Carol Perez? Yes. Nick Ray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. When's it going to be finished? <laughs> um, they want to be done by for season. This Coming season? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of. The, I mean, the, the golf course is pretty easy. Problem. The golf course is pretty easy peasy, yeah. 4,500 But he doesn't have any, like, windmills or stuff. It's like a real golf course. It's, just yeah, it's a real golf course. Yeah, no windmills. Yeah, no, no, you don't have to worry about getting knocked out by the windmill every time. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, now I guess we've got uh, board comments or staff comments. Uh -huh. Legislative items. Jeez, do we have a legislative item? No. Good. I uh, just want to make sure I have the date right. Your next board meeting is April 27th. Does okay. anybody have, of the board members that are here, um, do you have a conflict that you can tell us about now? Because we have items that are continued and a full schedule. We want to make sure we have a quorum. Yeah, April's my birthday month. There's no promises. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, party all birthday. <laughs> all month long. Yeah, it's on my calendar. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. We'll also reach out to the other board members early to make sure that they know that that meeting is um, once for this next month. We expect that to happen yeah. until we replace the position. I think Scott already informed you at the last meeting that he has shifted over to become the development permit manager. Um, Amy and I, Amy Alvarez and I, have not replaced him. So... Um, no congrats are in order. Tell your friends. We haven't shifted positions, but we are covering that position. So next month, you'll see Amy here at this post um, supporting you. You can email either of us with questions and, of course, Rochelle. If anything comes up, um, you don't have to deal with just me or just Amy. We're doing it as a team with the support of our director. Um, I think that's really it for me. Do you all have anything for us? Uh, yeah. Please. Uh, so we're going to one meeting per month, right? Temporarily, yes. Oh, temporarily. Oh. Well, so three hours, it's a long time to sit. And not. Could we propose like a break? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we do that with HPB. Yeah, that's normal. The meetings have definitely come down in length because the presentation times have come down to 20 minutes for the applicant and the city, but absolutely. The um, chairperson or a member of the board could propose a five, 10, 15 minute break. Okay. Um, if we, you obviously see the agenda was big, so bringing a snack and having some food um, is fine as well. And if we expect another large agenda, we could probably have some snacks for you. We do that for HPV. All right. Very good. Anybody else? Thank you, Michelle. I have a, a motion to adjourn. As chair, you can just do it. Adjourn. <laughs> Thank you for all your hard work. Right. Was it spring break? Is that why everyone was missing? Or Pretty much. Just by chance, everyone? Break. Yeah, they got kids. Yeah, so maybe they're all on spring break. <laughs> but.
Todd's got to watch it. He misses.